Good evening, uh, Amateur World League fans. Welcome to the Vanguard Major. This is a throwback tournament for $1,000. My name is Reader. I am, of course, joined by Kamika. Buddy, how are you doing? Are you excited to go back in time for some Vanguard action? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a while since we've been in this game, and I can't say I am, I'm, what's it called? I, I am happy to be back at the end of the day. It's, it definitely has been a while though, but yeah, I'm sure it's been just as long for all these players. Kilruck, I know I was just seeing him on LAN last weekend in Modern Warfare, so I'm curious to see if, how much Vanguard he's actually been playing in comparison to Modern Warfare. Yeah, for sure. We have three series tonight. The first one's going to be a best of three, and the other two are going to be best of fives. The first matchup is going to be E-Rise and Cerberus, which will be a best of three, of course, in the very first round. These are rosters that you may see familiar or you may not find familiar, but we do have a map pool, and it's going to be Tuscan Hardpoint, Berlin s and and then a Tuscan control. And honestly, I am very, very excited to play Tuscan. I think it might have been my favorite map from, from Vanguard. Yep, I feel right back at home in Vanguard. All we're missing is a little bit of Bocage time. But yeah, that I'm sure we'll get that at some point of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Tuscan, the map that people love to play, respawns on, and for very, very good reason. It's one of the more consistent maps. And so I've seen some of the most craziest of comebacks happen on this one as well. If you're a good hardpoint team, generally you will just outclass your opponents completely on this map. And so, yeah, I think that all the players are just about ready. A little bit of a rundown of the rosters for you once again. On the side of Erise is going to be Killrook, Hootie, Shadow, and Dory. I guess we'll shorten it to that. You'll see why in a minute. And on the other side, it's on Cerberus, it is going to be Toven, Blur, Stusky, and Confide. Players that I've seen quite a lot do, do great stuff in Vanguard, but Kilrook and Pudi especially recently in Modern Warfare 2 as well. Yeah, I, I think personally I have to be most excited for the weapons. I mean, this game, uh, iconically, the AR just had zero recoil, the Automaton, and then the MP40 was very similar in that sense, but had a lot of uh, we are going to get right into this map one. Tuscan Hardpoint. If you remember the callouts, remind me because uh, I, uh, I got them pulled up here and I did not realize this, Comica, but Tuscan specifically, but Vanguard as a whole, had a lot more callouts per map. Everything was named something specific compared to other games, other Call of Duty titles. So going back, just seeing. Everything is labeled, especially on Tuscan, uh, and it's so it's it's nuts to see just how much uh, communication was required for teams to compete at the highest level in this game. I mean, yeah, definitely. I I'm definitely gonna be trying to remember some of those calls right along with you. It's gonna be a fun time jogging our memory as we get in here on Tuscan. Right underway in purple, E Rise. Blur's gonna get that long angle down, Ooh. finding two, and that is the opening picks for our Vanguard Major Tournament. It's a double kill, and it's gonna solidify initial here for Cerberus. They're gonna grab some points right off the bat. Already spot the flip, and I Rise is gonna get shut down again by Blur, who's now on a three kill streak. Great start to the tournament so far for Cerberus, but there's still so much work to be done, of course. We're still. Uh, on P1, A-Rise yet to touch the hard point as Blur is just going off right now. Yeah, A-Rise doing a pretty, pretty solid job of keeping the spawns. A lot of time being lost off this P1, so they really got do got to make the most off of this P2. Otherwise, their opponents are quickly going to run away from this. Dory doing a good job of stopping that push from Confide. Excuse me, Tovin, who could have definitely ruined quite a lot of that for them. But speaking of things that are going the way of Cerberus, you know, Slur is getting very close to streaks. If he does nurse those streaks pretty well, a lot of these open hills could be his playground. Yeah, great trade for him right there, trying to get into the back. Tovin's going to get shut down on Platt. It's still another few kills here for e is giving them a solid amount of time on P2. Those spawns that they held during the cycle of the first hard point was crucial in the hold that they have right now. Confit's going to give his best shot, getting naded by his own teammate right there, Blur is still 
gunning. Only on a one streak, though, as he did fall during that hard point and go all the way across the map for P3 in just about 20 seconds. The fight is already on. Killrook is in the back for e rise trying to shut down this rotation out of Cerberus. Pudi is able to lock down P5 here as Cerberus cannot rotate on that side of the map. So it's good map control for i rise overall in this game, but the points do not reflect it as there's about a 50 point difference here after the first two. Yeah, clearly you guys have some pretty good memories on their P3 rotations here. This is definitely one of the bigger point of contentions that I remember from last season is teams would get these great rotations here and a big indicator of how skilled a team was on this map at the very least is if they could prevent their opponents from setting up just like E-Rise is right now. Now, fortunately, Blur did not get his streak completed. Otherwise, this would be quite the easy affair for them to break having everything be right out in the middle of the open. But Shora, he's starting to get pretty close to it once again. As you can see, three in a row here. Streak getting called in and Kelrook dropping another one. And with that, should be the, these last 20 seconds secured and potentially some more for Cody on the next hill. Yeah, Ali just turned into a blender on that hill and Kill Killrook was the main guy getting the work done all the way in the back of the map behind that hard point. But Church will be the site for P4 as it's about to become active. Stuski is going to get some positioning there as he'll lose his gunfight to Killrek. He's able to break through the back. He's going to be the first player collecting time here. This is a tight space. You're going to want your subs entering and grabbing those trays to try to take this hard point. e is going to grab initial again on this one, and they've now tied the game at 79 but will not take the lead. We'll finally grab that initial point. Confined, able to get into the back. There's the first one, and his team is able to sort out the rest of oh. I-Rise. That's four down, and now they are able to retake their lead. That was lost for only a moment. Still, I-Rise, great spawns, progressing through the tank, and Arches trying to get into the back of the church. Blur gets some help from Stuski. They're able to shut down Shadow. Top church pinch from Pudi is good for one. But no more. 100 point mark been hit by Serbius as we are about to end this full rotation of hard points with a sight on the P5, which is in max. Great hard point, always Mixy, but can be held for a good amount of time. Oh, Mixy indeed. Did not expect Confide to be there, apparently, even though he had a really good rotation there, Pootie. But good, luckily for him, he's got Shadow that made the quick rotation there for him as well. This hill is Grenade Central, and it's definitely going to be quite the, the clown fiesta, if you know what I'm talking about here, as this is one of the most contestable hills in the game. But Cerberus getting a full team wipe rolling here onto the rise could start to extend their lead even more than they already have. Yeah, I remember it, in this game, trophy systems were added later on to ranked, but were still GA'd in competitive play, which is very interesting. I can only imagine that they're still GA'd in these tournaments. We should not see trophy systems whatsoever. So yeah, hills like this are going to be utility. Tossed in stuns and nades to try to force your opponents out of the area. And with the end of the fifth hard point, we will see the second coming of P1. Of course, MW2 has a lot more hard points per map. And I believe every map sticks to just five hard points, as is traditional in most Call of Duty titles. So we're going to see a lot of uh, P1 in a lot of maps. We'll probably see it three times, maybe a rare fourth time, depending on uh, how the map is played and how close the score actually is. But right now, we have about a 50-point difference. Blur's gonna find a two-piece. Finally trade up by Shadow. Can't find more than that, though, as he tries to bunny hop into the line of fire. And he's gonna get cleaned up. Nobody's on the hard point right now. Serbius steps on. A 151 is their score right now, as they are trying to break in for P2 spawns. Last time we saw P1, Irise was able to win back the time that they lost on P1 by holding on to those back spawns. It doesn't look like that's gonna be the case as they hit this P1, letting Confid in for the pitch. He's gonna grab one off this one, make it two. Still the spawns are in his favor. He's got a lot more work to do and he does get shut down by Pooty. That's a few in a row for I-Rise and they'll hold on to the positioning. They should get a good amount of time here on P2 unless Serbius is able to break through. Yeah, a lot of the hope there for Cerberus and just staying off that time. They know they got the lead and so they're gonna say, you know what? Let's try and sacrifice this Mixie Hill for a potential full 60 on the next one. We'll see if we can get our opponents baited on in here. That's exactly why Confide was in this area that he was. Almost worked out for him, but as you can see, Arise, they are no idiots. They sit and stand their ground, and they make sure they get this rotation. And even with this rotation, it's a difficult, difficult affair just because of how oppressive Cerberus' presence is. 
but it seems like they're at least denying their opponents the time for the time being but i mean can five still in here getting knocked off dang this hill is just super duper mixy and we're getting to the point where you rise are going to be looking to get these rotations that they have been granted by default yeah about 15 seconds in the second hard play as pootie has gotten in the back but without that ar he's got to play a lot closer to his opponents than he might like to in through vines he goes the fight is central around the mid part of the map as cerberus is a little bit late on this rotation 190 to 125 initial is being captured by i right off the bat the push through p5 though could be mounting on kill wreck and he's not even able to find one before they're able to break through that's a lot of space now as i rise now has fire to think about as well if they want to push through there Cerberus is able to win the trades on the rooftop. Dory's gonna have to start looking behind him as there's a lot of flank from Cerberus. Pooty is gonna TK Dory. Still, they're holding on to the hard points. Dookie goes down. Shadow finds one. Confid will go for three to take the hard point, but it's only really scrap time. Make it four. A four down for Confid, and he will grab scrap time. He's gonna leave it off to a teammate trying to rotate quickly across the map, but that does deny iRise some important scrap time that they wanted to try to come back into this game. The score is ticking for iRise as that 200 point mark has been hit by Cerberus, and they are not very far away from winning this map. iRise needs some time, and they need a lot of it as the lead has been extended over 50 points now. Yeah, that last minute shell there for Confide, absolutely huge. Not only does it completely wipe out the entirety of the enemy team and give your already rotating players a great time, all oh, putting that on hold, Pootie doing exactly the same thing, full team wipe right on back. And with that full team wipe, they can finally hunker down on this hill that is generally pretty easy to hunker down on. They just got to make sure that all their angles are covered. Got to be nice in practice, but Confide clearly a little bit better at the, at the MP40 play than these guys right now. Erise still holding their ground, haven't been broken for too, too much, and they can get within spitting distance of Cerberus off this hill. Yeah, this one could turn into a tight one. They do need to get that rotation on for the next hard point. And this one, of course, is a mixy one. We'll see the nades again, as we did see it the first time. Erise is in behind the church. This is where they're going to be spawning. Blur already has a lockdown. He's got a teammate with him, Tobin, who's able to grab that first one. Does get traded out. Blur dealing with that player well and he'll hold on to time as this fifth hard point becomes active a oh. team nade is gonna get rid of him and now Cerberus is a little bit backed up on this hard point terrorized with the flag i believe that's pooty in fire does get dealt with with blur it was shadow and dory is currently contesting time he's actually collecting at the moment as Cerberus isn't able to step on 229 to 217 stun on the pooty Tovin comes running into the hard point finds two his teammate will find one more but the trades don't go their way it's a dead hard point shadow steps on still more players flooding into this point every piece of time is important so teams are fighting for these drafts like they haven't before so far in this map kill rook able oh, to deal rook. with one in you and that's a big pick pooty is gonna grab positioning on p1 it is gonna come down to this first hard point the third coming of it for the final moments of this game, it should not go to a P2. This will be the final stand for both teams, but only nine seconds are needed for Cerberus on this hard point, and they're spawning in. I, you could call it in, I guess, for P2. Shadow goes on a times five with the first one down, 40. Now we're tied. Not a lot of time for either team. Stuskies find one, can't find the second one. Still collecting his eye rights. They're three seconds off. Pooty finds one, and that should be it. Eye rise comes from behind and they will win map one. How incredible. They were trailing by about 50 points for nearly the entire map, and just in the final few hard points, will come back to win it. That is some classic Vanguard antics, and I love to see it. Yeah, speaking of coming from behind, Pootie with that awesome flank on that P4 really did set things in motion for them. Let's not forget, going into that P4, they were a solid 40 points down at the very least, and on a generous amount. And so the fact that he was able to completely wipe that out finally gave him a moment to set up on the hill that generally teams are able to turn into a money hill. We didn't see that in the first rotation as much just because both teams were a little bit equal in it, no trading out efficiently, no one was really able to set up. But once Pootie did that, they were finally able to get pretty much as close to a full 60 as we've seen off of any of these hills so far. 
And then from there, they had the good tempo, the good rotations. And when their opponents also started killing each other, killing themselves by accident, that, that inevitably turns into good trades for you. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about the score lines, I believe there was a DC right before it ended from Cerberus, but I don't think it mattered because it was just a few seconds before the map ended. But Blur ended plus 10. Uh, he was definitely the MVP of that map, at least statistically. Uh, I, I, I Rise just had a better KD overall. All four of their players were firing to go positive nearly, uh, except for Dory, 15 and 21. But uh, yeah, overall, they just had better team play at the end of the game. That's all that really mattered. They focused more on hunkering down and holding on the spawns for next if if they didn't feel confident that they could break the hard point that Serbius was on. Especially that P1. They had uh, spawns for P2 both times it was active. And I believe they got majority of time on P5 both times it was active. And that was enough to, to win the map with a, a last set ditch effort. Uh, in the final moments of that map for them to take map one. So, of course, this is only a best of three. Uh, so, E-Rise only needs one more map to advance in this tournament. Cerberus is now looking at elimination, which is interesting. Usually we have best of fives, of course, but with the tournament this long, you, the first round's got to be shortened up a little bit, of course. So, best of three. We have uh, possibly one more map in this series, but could be two. Very true. This this could be death's door for Cerberus if they're not careful, which is, again, a little bit surprising. I, my memories of these guys in this game were always really, really good, but obviously they're going up against some really stiff competition. Maybe you could say a little bit unlucky to face these guys so early on in this competition, but yeah, Killrook and Killrook and Pudi. These guys I've seen together in the last couple of events I've casted. And so they are very, very familiar with each other. If you were saying that you noticed a lot of great teamwork coming out of them, that is exactly why. These guys have been together for a decent amount of time now, at least two uh, two lands for the last two months. And Pudi, I've heard that he is a really, really good IGL, is the glue that holds the team together. And Killrook, he's, he's pretty top tier, very tilt-proof, very good at the game generally, as well as uh, just fundamentally. And so put a lot of stuff like that together, you're, you have a team that's pretty unrattleable and going into search and destroy where you can definitely have a lot of tilting things happen to you, that is very important. Yeah, absolutely. Berlin is going to be our next map. It's a search and destroy. And I'm rattling my brain trying to remember how this map is played on search and destroy. But what I do remember, oh, I mean, there's I so many you. levels on this map. There's uh, a lot of different angles that you, you just can't think about all of them. Top fire comes to mind, uh, top mid comes to mind, top back warehouse comes to mind. There's so many ways to defend the bomb, and I believe it's defender sided if I remember correctly. Yeah, generally it is defender sided from what I remember, but there's definitely a lot you can do on the attacking side as well. Generally, if you have a good sniper, you want to be playing for the outside of the map, especially if you have good long range just in general. You can play for dock side, get good control over the middle of the map, try and pressure the people on the inside, especially if you have good subs. There's a lot of ways that you can play this map, and generally my memories are of everyone attacking the A side on the dock, the B side, excuse me, on the dock side. Cerberus is gonna have their go at defending right away here. Irise gets to attack in round one, and Pudi is gonna open us up with one on Confid right off the bat. There's the first blood in round one to get us started. It's looking like an A side hit. Now, there's a lot of prep that needs to be done by the attackers before they can just waltz into this A side specifically. Tovin on the AR needs to be dealt with. He's doing a good job of holding and calming his teammates and where these players are. And I'm grabbing that first pick. That second one as well, leaving Shadow, the last one standing. He does find one on Blur, making it a 1v2, but he's still outnumbered. The bomb is down. He's picked it up now. I'm not sure that Tovin is aware that he's entered onto the A site right here. So he is a pass pawn at the moment and does have the information on one but not the other he could take this all the way to the b side well whatever he decides he has to choose it very quickly because you're going to start to get to the territory where you're not going to have time to rotate to b and that he's pretty much at that point now and he realizes it's starting to high tail back on over cerberus at this point just sit in the middle of the map waiting for him to go for the bomb site so that they can retake it as two without getting pieced apart by shadow they really don't want to get one v one and then one v one again does escape plot, but Stuki is aware of where he went. I think he saw him for a split second. Shadow was tagged up by that nade that he tossed. 
And Stuki is able to get all the way around behind them. Coven is already firing on him, and there is an expert execution by Cerberus to win this first round. Plenty of time on the clock to get this defusal off as well. The 2v1, no upset in this one, even with the bomb planted. Good effort, though, as that assault on the A site was, uh, was a little disconjointed, but impressive nonetheless. Yeah, regardless of the generation of COD that we're in, whether we're in Vanguard or Modern Warfare, that's just good search and destroy fundamentals right there. That's something that can get you far in any search and destroy in any COD, grouping up like that and letting your opponents either go for A or B and then just make a concerted decision together. That That's something that'll get you far. A lot of the less good teams won't do that, and then you'll see people like Shadow just piece them apart, take their 1v1s and then 1v1 it again, which is exactly what I was worried about. We do see Cerberus trying to go for a little bit of an off-the-wall play going over, but ooh, Pooty caught on the outside. It's a great start for Cerberus. Yeah, Tobin looking down right at Kilrak. Kilrak unaware of his positioning on that far outside the map. Fire! Jesus. Goes down as well to his hands. Man, that was a quicker round than I may have been expecting, although that B site hit typically results in a faster round if they don't get the bomb planted because it's just so open you can see everything so i mean it's an ar's world on that side of the map and they definitely took advantage of it yeah that was definitely a little bit more of a attacker sighted b bomb site than i am typically expected to seeing especially considering that they fully killed everyone within the first i want to say 40 seconds of the round very very atypical and yeah definitely something you got to watch out for next time you're on the defense if you're a rise Cross. Wow, a lot of hit markers there from Tovin, but unfortunately the auto is a pea shooter at that range, so he's not able to get the full kill. Good defense in the site right now by Cerberus. There's going to be a tough breach for IE Rise if they want to hit this B site. Blur is able to get that first one down on Shadow this time. That makes him 3-1 and one at the moment, but not the highest KD in the lobby. Tovin has yet to go down, and he's 5-0, and oh, snuck all the way beside Depot as e -Rise is going to rotate this bomb over to the A side after giving up that first pick. And you know, I'm a little bit shocked. Cerberus has so much information that their opponents are not at all going for B. I'm a little bit shocked that they're not making their way back over here. I'm a little bit shocked as well. That Whoa. Is so deep and getting wrecked by Confide. That is bombed down in no man's land. They had the freest of plants and they didn't take it. And with 25 seconds left, you are going to be reeling from this if you are arised. Yeah, if this was baseball, that'd get chalked up as an error because you cannot push like that. Not only can you not push like that, you can't lose like that in that gunfight against an opponent. I had no idea you were there. A little bit of a, a mistake there will cost I rise that round. And Serbius takes a commanding lead in this search and destroy so far. We have seen maps like this get flipped on its head, though. I rise just needs one round possibly to bring that momentum back to their side. And I mean, more importantly, Kilrick and Dory need to get on the board. Yeah, a little bit of, I'll, I'll say it, sloppy starts for Arise. Obviously, they probably haven't played this game in quite a long time. As I said, they've been playing a lot of Modern Warfare lands at the end of the season. So yeah, maybe just need a little bit of a kick in the pants in the form of three rounds lost in a row and only two kills gotten in that amount of time to get them playing in the right mindset again. Bomb planted on A by Cerberus, and they are home free, at least on the site. Some wall bang action from Pudi, not finding any hit markers off that. The stun won't find anything either. Kilrook is the closest man to the site right now as a pinch is tried but failed. Tovin will grab that first one. He does get traded out by Dory. That first kill was with the pistol. Now, Irise has pushed their way onto the site, but there's some good overlook and protection here, especially from the sniper. Does go down, though. I don't think Con Confid did find one early in the round, but other than that, he wasn't able to find any value with the sniper. Unfortunately, that bomb is about to explode, and Irise is getting pieced out. So Cerberus will win that round before the bomb goes off and achieve a 4 to nothing lead. Not a great start in the search and destroy for E-Rise. Yeah, definitely something that can be recovered from, but you gotta start making these adjustments soon. Usually when I'm casting these players on a rise like Kilrick and Pudi, I always praise them for their ability to make on-the-fly adjustments, to make great play calls in the moment, but a lot of that stuff comes with practice, and I'm not quite sure, again, how much practice they have 
We'll see what they can do. Going for a little bit of an A hit, mid map control, looking to see what information he can get on the cross. I think he may have gotten the timing to see at least one of those players go. And so we'll see what Arise does with that information. Yeah, another A hit, it looked like right off the bat, but now they've kind of backed off that area. Just a little bit of overlook mid side. They're looking for some more information to try to move forward. Number three in your map, Kill Rook is in an interesting position. Could find someone, but could get picked off all alone, isolated. The only player for E-Rise on the B side of the map. Serbius is slowly but surely making the way forward. Look at this little standoff. Blur, I think he's aware. There is one player right there. He's able to find the kill because Dory was unaware of where Blur was. Good trade by Kill Rook. He hustled to get to where he needed to be to find that trade. Blur almost escaped with his life. Not quite. 3v3. I'm running down on the clock, but three seconds left for the attackers. E-Rise to get this plant off. They haven't really made very much progress up the map either way. Tovin with a good wall bang. A little bit of information off those hit markers as Kilrook is finally going to push forward on this B side. Ooh, almost catches the timing, but his teammate might as well. Ooh, a little bit of miscom, but they will find that player shadow. Oh, should be able to kill. Good pinch by Confid. Can he find more? He's the last alive. Lots of hit markers down, but not quite the kill on the Kilrook who's able to escape with his life at about 24 health. Pooty will get this bomb planted on the B site. And I mean, everything is smelling like an E-Rise victory here. But Confid still has a little bit of time on the clock and an angle on Kilrook, making it a 1v1. All the way in the back of the map goes Pooty, trying to look at this bomb from a safe distance. He's going to sit all the way back in Train Depot, and Confid's going to go hunt him down. Can he find this kill? I wonder if Pooty's going to check behind him. He's actually going to try the side door? No I don't know. Confid has no idea where this player is. And now that his position being revealed, I mean, I don't think there's even time on the clock for him to get this planted anymore. Or the defused, I mean. So that's going to be the round, the first round found by E-Rise. And it looks like Confid's just going to hold on to his life, hold on to his two streak as this round ends. Yeah, absolutely crazy finish there from Arise. Let's not forget that they traded one for one Bloods and basically had zero map control for the vast majority of that round. But one great call, one great flank from Killrook, the teasing of the flank, it paid off an off-screen Pooty with a massive kill on Dostoevsky, who was sitting planted on B the whole time, somehow, someway, loses that fight to Pooty. And with that, Arise are able to just squeak that one by and stay alive in this map. Favoring the B-side, Serbius on the attack. Haven't made the cross quite yet. It's starting to open the doors out of Tovin. Successful. There is overlook here from Irise on the side of the map. And some initial firing into the depot. Ooh, Tovin does see that player. He does not have a weapon to be able to realistically grab that kill. Still no first blood as we are under a minute left to go in this round. A great angle from Convid, who's able to get up top mid. But he won't go for the second one either. He's going to escape with his life and play the numbers as Serbius goes across the map, streaking over to the A side. And they're going to get this bomb planted before I rises any of the wiser. We'll see what Dory can do. Ooh, trying to remember how to play <laughs> Vanguard just a little bit. Only got one kill so far. Seeing what they can find this time as Blur is breathing down their next slide in the corner again. Absolutely annihilated by Blur. 4 HP left. A little bit of a rough one there. And now in goes Pooty just firing wildly with a pistol. And Tovin still wins the fight. Getting out scot-free. Cerberus, they're back on top. And all they need is one more round. Yeah, I rise uh, has only found one round. They can't string a few together, at least so far. And it doesn't look good in the kills to deaths ratio either. It does look good on the side of Serbius as Confid increasing his to five and two, six and two. Tovin seven and two in the moment. So really, really well done by Serbius in this map so far. They looked like they definitely looked like the more well rehearsed team in Vanguard in that map one. But the upset gave e Rise that first map victory. But it looks like this one might go the other way for Cerberus unless Irise has one last ditch effort again. Stuski runs into a teammate, nearly turns on him. Tovin and Pooty exchange a few. One of the sniper, a pistol kill by Tovin, and makes his pick a two piece. And they'll take a live advantage three to two. Lots of gunfighting right off the bat here. Pooty, another sniper's kill, this time on Stuski. Blur will deal with Dory, leaving Pooty the last one standing. So we're in a 2v1 in a fast paced round. 
and it's in the favor of Cerberus. Toven and Blur is still standing. Pootie is soloing for his team to try to stay alive in this he map. Sees and there oh is a, a good piece of timing. I, you can call it timing. You can call it uh, a lucky uh, moment. He's going to play with him for a little bit before oh he takes God. him out. Now, a 1v1. He has the opportunity to plant. And he is going to plant it down on B. Now, how is Cerberus going to approach this? I believe it's Tovin, the last one standing. It is. And Pudi is going to defend this from inside the bomb site with the AR. Interestingly enough, Tovin has a lot to clear before he enters. Yep, Pudi could be pretty much anywhere, but he did not want to move off the site. He does have an MP40 in his back pocket, so that's going to do him well in this scenario. Does he pick the right corner? He's stun checking, so that eliminates a lot of the possible spots. He runs right past wow. him, though, and Pudi with the ace does keep Arise still alive for the moment. Yeah, really well done there by Pudi. Pudi only had an AR, but decided to hold that close angle anyways. He got a little bit lucky with that stun check. It was on the other side of the site. And comes away with the win after the overshoot by Tobin. Not quite checking that corner. I, I, he did check it, but it was just way too fast for him to process anything, of course. So, Irise stays in it. 5-2, to two, we sit. I mean, they have to win, what is it, four rounds in a row to sneak away with this map. Cerberus back on the attack. Looking at this B site once again. There's a big contrast between these two teams. As Irise is favored, the A site more right off the bat, where Cerberus... Likes his quick plan on the B side. Pudi's going to get away with that first blood of the MP40. Shadow will follow up. So 4v2, great start. Good numbers now for Irise. Pudi will find one more even, leaving the last player standing, Tovin. Will we see an ace the other way to win the game? There's the first one down for Tovin. The second one on the site. And now it's a 1v2, a completely different situation. But both players for Irise are closing in. There's the challenge. He gets no way! Away and finds the first one. Does go down, but would have that been insane? If Dory did not grab that trade as quick as he did, wow, I, I can't even process. Wish I had a replay because it seemed as if I, Tovin just kind of snuck away from his opponents. Yeah, he just ran past him like a ship in the night, but luckily for him, he has a better set of eyes than his opponent turned around on him in the moment. But luckily for them, Dory was finally able to find a kill and got now two kills in the game. Better, honestly. I'm, I'm not I'm not mad about the kill count there for Dory. It may be low, but definitely popping off when he needs to. And still, somehow, some way, Arise are in this game. It's only a two-round difference now. Still, Cerberus only needs one round. I mean, no mistakes can be made by E-Rise. Any mistake could send us to a map three. Dory's going to look down long angle on the map here. Shadow will open us up with the first one. It's the second, maybe even third time Irise comes out with this first blood. Ever so important to grab that early live advantage. It matters so much at the end of the round. But there's a lot of presence inside the map, rather on the exterior right now for Cerberus. As Irise is trying to push their way up. They take that slower pace in these uh, attacking rounds that Cerberus likes to do. They like to do it quickly, but it's paying off now as Shadow will find his second of the round, traded by Tobin. Kilrook will grab a nade kill, leaving Stuski, the last player standing in a 1v3. Finds the sniper on the top of the roof. We'll grab that kill. It is Pooty back there, but it cannot escape after being stunned. And Irise will make this a one round game. If I'm Cerberus, I'm getting nervous. Yep, this is starting to get to the point where you're like, oh god, don't throw, don't pl throw, please don't throw if you are Cerberus. But yeah, like I said, Arise, they, these guys are really smart cookies, especially when it comes to search and destroy. They have the opportunity, they have the ability to stay untilted, kill Rook and Pootie. It's something I've noticed from them quite a lot, especially in my interviews with them. And yeah, they've, they've, they've damn well done it again, dude. Almost there. And they've been getting a lot of free picks on the server. It's just the aggression is getting punished. And Arise, they just seem absolutely ready for it every single time. And in comes the aggression once again onto the bomb site. Not checking a dang thing, but they're not checking it right on back. Great coverage from Confide. And with that, they don't get a single blood, but the bomb is planted. Okay, here's Pootie acting aggressively on the exterior. There's the first one for him. He's looking for more, grabbing that last hit marker on the Tovin. He gets credited with that kill as well. He's 10 and 7 now after that. Dory will grab a, a great pinch on the Stuski, leaving Confid in a 1v3. It looks like Cerberus is taking turns 
one the exiting this e rise team as they cannot stay standing for very long in these rounds since they won that fifth round defuse is on here from shadow and he should get it pretty cleanly here in no way shape or form is confident able to defend that bomb and we will have a round 11 after Cerberus goes up five to one i think it was maybe it was five nothing at one point i think it was just five to one and the comeback from air rise again similar to how they did in the first map now reader this is where call of duty becomes just as much of a mental game as it is a video game we will see who has the better mental toughness between cerberus and arise arise obviously rising in their confidence as the game goes on cerberus just got to be not diminishing in theirs as you can see they know they're giving up a lot of these free bloods look how tightly they are sitting together they desperately want to avoid giving arise a, an opening pick again yeah i mean this is a stalemate if i've ever seen one and you hardly ever see this in vanguard just because of how fast paced it is but uh, both teams are not making the first move they don't want to give up that first blood and we don't even see any lurkers on either team trying to sneak it away in behind their opponents there's just a lot of standstill and i mean the the fight is primarily between these ar players right now as they are really just trying to scope out each other along the edge of the map oh here's the first gunfight kill rook comes away with that first blood and i think that might be the most important kill of this series so far as he will take an advantage i want to call it an early advantage but it's really not as bomb's going down with under 30 seconds to go pootie is gonna plan it as cerberus has made their way forward confid looking around the back blur is able to help him out he's gonna grab the second one shadow does find one in the meantime kill rook grab on his stuski leaving confid for his team's life trying to clutch 1v2 there's the first one dory goes down the last one standing is in the back and to hold the bomb from back warehouse this is what i talked about before the map started this kind of angle is just uh, almost impossible to take someone off of and you actually have to physically go get them most of the time now the bomb is planted dory's defending of course and uh, confit is on the site but he's a little bit nervous to see the don't think he started planning. I'm not sure if he lagged out, but he seems to be just standing there. And Dory is going to grab that final kill, giving iRise the series win against Cerberus. Cerberus looked like they had the absolute advantage in both maps that they played. And LA, or uh, e rise comes out the victors in both maps to sweep their opponents. Really well done. You could have had me fooled that Arise had the advantage the whole time. I mean, Cerberus, four round wins in a row unanswered. And those round wins weren't even close. Let's not forget, going into round three, they only had two kills, dude. Two kills in three rounds. That is abysmal. But somehow, some way, they found, they, they put on their big boy point, pants, they, they hunkered down, they're like, all right, guys, we're not losing this. Let's get it together. Let's push this one through and we can beat these kids. And that is exactly what they did. The tilt proofness of Kilrook and the leadership of Pootie. Once again, legendary status. Yeah, I mean, one thing I can absolutely say for sure is that was a great kickoff to this tournament. A, it was a two round or two game sweep, but both games were very, very interesting to watch. And of course, it was just great to see those maps again. I mean, Berlin and Tuscan were both staples back in Vanguard, and they were playing the game modes that we like to play on those specific maps. I mean, Berlin Hardpoint can be hated sometimes, so seeing it on SD, which is, I mean, almost universally loved as an SD map, at least for Vanguard, and then Tuscan, of course, the all around map, all purpose map, coming in for the Hardpoint right off the bat. I know you did mention wanting to see a Bocage. I really hope we do see one today or tomorrow because that is definitely the staple of this game is that map so hopefully we see it soon well ladies and gentlemen either way that is going to be the end of this series arise they're going to be moving on up to the next round we've got another game coming up at 8 30 so in a very short order so don't go anywhere will we see arise continuing to arise through the the bracket and will we see a bokaj coming back once again answer to those and so one of those is at least going to be yes and so, Ryder, that's going to be all for me. Catch Ryder and Graf coming up again at 8.30, and we will see you guys real soon.
Welcome back, AWL fans. We are ret and steady, re or set and ready, sorry, to go for uh, round two, winner's round two, which will be between Revived Gaming and Team Mew. Rosters consist for Revived Gaming, Geo, Gus, Raider, and Dak. And for Mew, it's Pandemic Skater, Zeno, and Crooked. My name is Reader. I'm joined by Grab the Giraffe, subbing in for winner's round two, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm ready for a little bit of Call of Duty throwback. I, I'm a person that, when we were talking about this before it kicked off, was I'm not a big throwback type of person, but with these two teams going up against each other, I will absolutely come back and cast as much as I can for this game because I know everybody was just kind of getting all worn out of MW2. Now that the season's over, everybody kind of has their offseason go back and play these other games. And we got a treat for a map one reader. We have a Bokaj hardpoint, and I think everybody knows that this is a map that's going to be like a 250, 248, 249 type scoreline. Yeah, and it always is, of course, on Bokaj. It can't get any closer, and it can't get any faster. This is the fastest paced mm. map in possibly Call of Duty history, at least competitive map, of course. So uh, it, it's always exciting to, to see Bokaj. So many gunfights happen within the span of one map uh, you can't even count them so uh, i'm i'm more probably most excited for uh p1 of course the mixiest map mm -hmm. it, it probably ever so i mean personally that's what i'm looking forward to but of course i mean a lot of these names on this roster actually played in awl's vanguard season last year so it's a little bit of a reunion this matchup which is also going to be exciting to see if you remember those players yeah, absolutely. And I know Geo, Gus, Raider, and Dak, these are just incredible challengers players too. I think that's kind of the biggest thing. They they play at the top of uh top level of the amateur scene. And so I expect nothing less from them of 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 getting this win. And I, I do want to apologize. You're probably hearing some thunder in the background. We have some big storms uh rolling through where I am at. But then on the other side, there are no slouches either from from the side of Team Mew with Pandemic and Xeno. I've seen these guys perform. They're absolutely nasty. But on a map like Bokaj, you're kind of relying on Geo to be that IGL, be that aggressive submachine gun player, and just kind of get up in your face. It's just going to be such a good matchup. Unfortunately, we don't have all the map sets. We're, we're, since this is a best of five, we don't have everything all laid out currently in front of us. But it's going to be an incredible series here, Reader. Yeah, finally back in the best of fives as well. I'm, I'm sure uh, a lot of the teams that went down to the loser's bracket, like uh, the team we just saw, would uh, would be a little felt a little bit cheated after losing in a best of three. But of course, their season is not over. And of course, the loser of this game is also not done out of this tournament. They go down to a loser's bracket that will not get on stream. But we could see those teams again so obviously keep the losers in mind as this tournament goes on we do have one more series after this tonight before the semi-finals start tomorrow at seven o'clock and then at 10 o'clock tomorrow the grand finals will happen as well so there's a lot of uh call of duty happening alongside this series right here as well if i can pull up the bracket to show you guys just kind of what it looks like um Alongside this matchup in round two, the F Killers are playing the Singapore Syndicate, which is a familiar name among the AWL. The Mommy Milkers are playing the High Seekers, and a bye goes to Wreck. So uh, that's in uh, that's up in round two, and of course down in losers bracket, there's a lot of teams still waiting uh, for their opponents so that they can move on to losers round two. Uh, we are just waiting on this lobby to get started and ready to go. So we'll take a little bit of a break here as everyone gets slotted in. Of course, everybody knows how Vanguard custom lobbies tend to go. So we'll be back in just a few seconds.
welcome back as we are finally loading on into the map one of winners round two as we have revived going up against team mu i'm here with raider in this awl throwback tournament how are you thinking this map one on bokash hardpoint is going to be oh man i'm so excited for bokash it's, it's going to be fast it's going to be hectic chaotic uh, and i mean there's going to be a lot of moments where we don't exactly know what's going on, but hopefully it'll be clear-cut enough to decide a winner as frequently Bokaj's turn out to be very, very close. Hardpoint maps. Dak is going to grab the first amount of time in this map, plus the second kill. Gus to be attributed to that first blood and already revived gaming oh, is on the board with a four down. Oh, oh goodness. Reader, this is just you can tell that these guys have been waiting to play this game. Revived is just coming out swinging as they are getting a lot of this P1 time as well. That's just something that you you typically don't see that often on probably one of the most heavily contested maps in all of Call of Duty history and the most fast paced, like you said before. But either way, finally, Team U starting to get a few kills under their belt and starting to maybe push back the front lines, but Dak is still for Ryan as he's running around with that MP40 and I know everybody loves that weapon as oh my goodness Geo he's following him up five in one right now revive game they're not slowing down yeah P2 has just become active and revived was able to get those spawns right off the map start and they did not lose them whatsoever team Mew is going to be fighting from the front and Geo might have a little bit of a pitch by the way here there's the first one second one escapes into the barn but this kill feed has been red since the start and it continues to oh. be that way geo finds another one on skater but he is forcing team U to spawn uh, a little bit deeper than they would like to and man he's just running these guys skater goes down into his hands as well sebi does pull off a multi-kill there for some positioning top barn but he's being hunted down right now by geo able to escape for just a moment he's heard but the timing will not let these players meet. The spawns do flip, but it's just turned into scrap time now. And after two hard points, almost two hard points, we have a 51 to five lead for Revive Gaming. And now they completely flip the spawns. They're gonna push them back in, in the back to bar. As Raider, are you kidding me? With a little grenade help from Geo from downtown. And they get the clean sweep. And ooh, unfortunately, they don't necessarily get the cleanest of spawns. But Geo, again, like you said, Raider, it's just an all red kill feed. It, the one thing I'm noticing right now and going back for the first time and watching this is how clean the movement is compared to MW2 where it's just everybody's clunking around. These guys just feel like they are sliding like on knee pads across the map. Yeah, I revived gaming before this map even started. I was watching the chat. There's a little bit of extra cricket activity before this map even started. They were claiming that Team U isn't even going to achieve 20 points, and that seems to ring true so far Whoa. as the 100-point mark is about to be hit by revived gaming, and Team U has only stepped on the point for about five seconds. Scrap time now as P3 is expiring. P4, the fight for it is on, and Team U is able to grab a little bit of scrap time here, but at the sacrifice of setting up for the new hard point, as there's a lot of red around the barn right now, and they are going to continue to box out Team U. Dak is able to grab a good one on the Sebi. Zeno will clap back on the Gus and Geo, and he's going to claim top barn as his own. Still no time on the points contested there for a second. Turns white, but immediately gets contested again. Skater's only able to find one before he goes down and Pandemic will find his where he's instantly traded. Revive Gaming is doing well playing as a team and trading out their teammates, although Team Mew is continuously getting clipped, it seems, especially by Geo, who's 16 and six right now, just as Team Mew will grab control of this hard point for just a moment. Geo was sitting at five and uh, 15 and three at one point. So, I mean, he hasn't slowed down at all, but still his teammates are getting the job done. And ooh, Skater getting a little slide cancel jump shot. Gets one, Raider comes in, cleans up, finds two, and will get shot in the back, turns around, but Zeno not falling for that one. He says, I still got the gunny. It doesn't matter which Call of Duty that I am playing as Dak is just lighting them up as well. Constantly finding twos and threes in the feed. Now we head on over 
to the P4, and it's going to be that River Hill. And I remember if <laughs> just all the nades that got spammed onto this point. But so far, so good. Revive Gaming. I mean, unfortunately, they did give up 20 points, uh, Reader. But I don't know how much more this team is going to get. Pandemic is able to find one onto Dak. Gus and Geo are able to do their thing on the point. Collecting that time. Geo finds one more on Skater. Look at this hit from Team Mew through the back. They might be able to get some position. They are. Xeno and Pandemic combined for a few. But Dak is, only, is able to trade out one. Still uh, a hard point now white, but without enough time on the clock for Team U to really collect much of anything as it turns into trap time. And now they're in trap behind the castle and Granny's forced to move their way up through the map back to P1. Now full rotation of hard points is done. We've seen five so far. And Revived Gaming has achieved a score of 160 past the halfway point that they need to win this game. And are just 40 points off of hitting that 200 point mark. Pandemic hits a few for his first multi-kill of the map. Xeno will grab one. Pandemic guys his third of his life. And we could see some time here if the white team, Team U, steps on this P1. So far, though, it has been all Revived Gaming without a doubt. It feels like Revived is putting them in like the deepest spawn trap. It almost feels like I'm watching Albagra Fortress control with where Team Mew is spawning. They just keep getting gunned right as they are running out into the open. But this is just too easy for the side of Revived. Everybody is hitting their shots. And then not to mention, like you said, they are getting those trades consistently. They're not really allowing much uncontested time. But finally, Team Mew... It's starting to maybe get a good setup here. They're they're getting some long lines of sight, holding the angles, and not giving away easy gunfights as Geo. He's still going to try to fight from the bottom barn as the kill feed. It will light up oh. white, and so that is a good sign for Team Mew, but nobody's in the point. Finally, somebody does hop on in. But either way, this is they're showing some signs of life now, but I know Revived, at some point, they are going to find all these skills, and they should be able to find a break as long as they get one, maybe two more but still they have not taken care of that player who's sitting on the back tank and that is going to be pandemic excuse me he's actually sitting in the backside barn yeah positive p1 does translate into a good setup for p2 but it does get run over by revived gaming gus with a few and now revived is collecting time which is just scrapped now with about 20 seconds left both teams streaking across the map for p2 which should become active in about 10 seconds. Pandemic finds one of the Geo. Dak will get that trade. Skater is going to open up the assault here from Team Mew. Geo gets tagged up, but is on the pinch. Can't find the pick, though. And that is three for Team Mew, I believe, before a full four down as well. Dak does trade it back, though. And we will have Revived Gaming spawning in behind Granny. Sorry, this is P3. As we said, 193 to 73, Revived Gaming not on the point right away, even though they were slotted in the back. Now, even if you have these back spawns, you can get trapped, if I'm remembering this map correctly, and it seems as if they've flipped. Now, as Team Mew is spawning close, Sebi grabs a good kill on the Raider, preventing that trap from even formulating at all. So, a three in a row here from Team Mew is going to keep them on the hard point, prevent Revived Gaming from hitting that 200 point mark. Which you should see a closer game now as Team Mew has sort of got their stuff together. I, you know, honestly, I'm glad that I have retired when I did because it just feels like everybody's moving at two times speed now. I don't know how everybody is able to react as fast as these guys because they are just flying across the map. And like you said, Team Mew, they're starting to put a few things together, not to mention they're getting these double chows, and now they're just playing smart. They're not just going out and trying to ego these gunfights, but so is the side of Revive Geo. My goodness, can he get the... He almost did for a second, not quite, but still his teammates will clean up the rest and a teammate does come on in from the side of Mewtwo Raider. He is still in the point as that 200 point mark has been a clip from the side of Revived and it's going to be a matter of time before they are going to hit that 250 mark. Or, uh, I do recall this map, a lot of the, um, there's a lot of maps or a lot of times that it went down to the clock. And, uh, it, I mean, it's still at a minute 50, but 25 seconds left. Revive should be able to wrap this one up. Yeah, that's certainly something we don't see anymore is uh, a hard point being ended by the overall time. I've sort of forgot about that, as it never happens in NW2. But I don't think if Revive Gaming continues collecting that we will see 
that clock expire as it's just too much of a score difference right now. Team U not having a positive P4 is grabbing initial on P5 so far. Skater is the first one to touch the point, but there's a lot of revived gaming in the area. They're getting in the back as well. Raider loses his gunfight next to the tower. Gus will pick up one against Sebi, another one against Skater as well. Still nobody on the hard point. Dak gets a free one, but can he get more? He can! Dak with a second going around the outside. He does get a bad timing on Skater in that third gunfight, but it will be enough for the match. Geo will collect the final seconds needed. Oh, 1 for 249. Oh, I thought that was going to be a crazy comeback for uh, at least a moment. But Revive Gaming will win this one 250 to 111, which is uh, a dominant victory to say the least. Hey, it's more than 20 points, so good job for the side of Team Mew. Uh, proving them wrong either way, it's still an L in this tournament. And there's a reason why Revive Game is the number one seed overall, because they have just such incredible talent. Not to mention, it, it doesn't feel like they're necessarily working incredibly as a team. They're just going out, and they're out slaying them at the moment, especially on a map like Bocage, where you do have the opportunity to do that. Um, but I know there was times when I remember Bokaj actually got released. I remember this map very vividly. It was a game between Minnesota Rocker and Florida Mutineers. Rocker outslayed by 40 kills and they lost the map. So just keep that in mind. There is teamwork that is really going to end up paying off. But still, when your slay power is that good and you still even have a decent amount of teamwork, they were just able to just roll over the side of Team U. Yeah, Geo had to be the MVP of that map. Right off the bat, he starts. Yeah, I think he nearly achieves a streak right off the bat and doesn't die for a long, long time. And then he doesn't slow down. Often we see players have a really good start to a map but aren't quite as effective come the end of the map. But that wasn't the case for Geo. Although that is all said and done and map one is over. It's a one nothing series lead for Revived Game against Team U and map two is already loaded in and underway. A search and destroy being played on Tuscan. Something we haven't seen. What just happened there? I think somebody accidentally spawned in, maybe on the wrong team. Uh, and they should spawn back in, uh, but of course, um, we're still we're still loading. So, I'm excited for a Tuscan Search and Destroy. We haven't seen it yet in this tournament, and I'm trying to remember correctly, but I believe there's a lot of action in the mid right off the bat. There is going to be a bunch of action, but it's really all about... If somebody's going to pull out a sniper, we saw Sib in this game, how deadly he was with the sniper, not to mention how good, yeah, I think, Attach was as well with the sniper. So we'll just have to wait and see. But like you said, A is was the typical bomb plant and defend is where you try to either get nades and maybe catch somebody off guard. And we did happen to lose somebody. And I did want to point out, Reader, that... How do we load into a map that fast? I don't think that yeah. we've ever seen a, 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 a 45 second map like swap. So that was absolutely incredible. But unfortunately it was at, um, at the price of losing a player from the side of Team Mew as the team names are actually flipped at the moment, but they're still going to play out this round. And I'm pretty sure for the side of Revived, they're, not, they're, they're feeling pretty good in a 4v3. Yeah, there, there should be a restart here. I'm not too clear on the rule, but we'll find out what happens. But, uh, yeah, you, I think you're absolutely right. That was really, really quick. A 45-second map start time, that's wild. Uh, especially because Vanguard custom games aren't exactly reliable at all. And we have no one's exited this lobby yet, so I'm going to assume it's fair game, play on. I can't remember if there was a spectator glitch where we just can't see one player on the scoreboard. But I don't think that that's the case right now. Yeah, okay, they are leaving the lobby. It will restart. So let's go to a little bit of a, a break because, of course, we, do, uh, we are just going to be sitting around here waiting for this to get restarted. So stay tuned. In just about a minute, we'll have this Tuscan back up and running. And we'll let you know if that first round counted, but I doubt it will.
Welcome back, AWL fans. We finally got the lobby sorted, we think. And we will be entering a Tuscan Search and Destroy with Revived Gaming up one to nothing in this series and one to nothing in this map as that first round that was played is actually going to count at the end of the day as it was Team Mew who is without uh, a player for which or whatever reason. Anyway, my name is Reader. I'm joined by Graf. How you doing, buddy? And I mean, what are we expecting out of a, out of a Tuscan Search and Destroy? This one's kind of an interesting map because you can run so many different strategies, but just the way that Vanguard is, it's, it's of course just a three lane map. And Raider, it doesn't matter. He just runs right through the middle, guns Zeno, domes them right off the map. And now you have a few other players working their way around and still taking their time, making sure that they want to be safe for this bomb plant. And that's exactly what they're going to do. But remember, teams a lot of time love to throw nades on that A bomb site and bank them off the wall and see if they can catch out that planner. That does not happen to be the case. Sebi, he tries to find one, at least spots him. And Skater does get one working on that backside step. So now they're trying to work in sync, trying to maybe develop just this two pronged attack. Unfortunately, Sebi gets caught out in, all the way in ruins. And so does Skater in the middle of the map, Revive Gaming. I mean, it was a quick map one, and it's looking like it could potentially be a quick map two. Yeah, I mean, if Revived Gaming continues to play the way they play in that round one, they certainly will. That first pick is what sticks out to me from that last round, and of course, Raider finding another one after that, the A-plant, the perfect defense. Skater really couldn't do anything, but did find one kill in that round. As now the roles are flipped, Team Mew is now set on attack. Skater just misses that first player streaking across mid. He's going to get away, probably up to P5 and in through fire. So a, a really quick route here from two revived gaming players through P5, and they're almost home free. There's not a lot of Team Mew presence around this area of the map. So one is going to go down, though. Pandemic is going to find a pick onto Raider, and the bomb is going to get planted here on the A site. Gus will gun down Skater P1 and make this a 3v3. Dak is very slowly but surely getting into a flank position, probably top fire. Geo's got an overlook. He's going to drop down, and it's up to Revive to retake and defuse this bomb. Now down in the man count, 3 to 1. Well, oh, and now... Uh, wow, well, now down 3 to none. Now yeah. 3 to none, <laughs> I guess. But that was a solid setup from the side of Team Mew. They're making sure that even if they did spot somebody out, they were just throwing shoulders, not giving anything away. Just a classic search and destroy maneuver, making sure that you're just not giving the, the life to the other team and making them have to get the mistakes out of their system first. And so for the side of Revive, they're st still currently up in a 2-1. Remember that first round did end up counting before we went to that little bit of a break. And so now it's going to be a three hit. Thought they were going to go through that P5, but they're thinking about maybe wrapping through middle. And nope, they're still thinking about it. And there comes the bank nade and Dak will nail it from downtown. And that is what I'm talking about. But either way, the players from Team U, they collapsed, and now it puts Geo in a 1v2 clutch. Yeah, it's a big question. Geo is a big gunner, but can he take on two at a time? These Team U players got to link up together. I'm not sure. Oh, Geo does have the bomb. He's going to take his time. He's got 45 seconds on the clock, and Skater and Sebi are giving him absolutely nothing. They are staying put, overlooking their collective sites, both A and B are covered right now by Team Mew. Sebi does see the cross. That's going to be the call-out to his teammate, who might be watching Top Broken right now as he crosses it is. Skater is going to get a couple hit markers down on Geo. Geo is now aware of his positioning, and unfortunately, Sebi is in no position to grab that snipe as Geo makes it in through down the bottom church. 15 seconds on the clock. geo has got a plant. He makes it over to the B site. He's going to give this plant a chance. He knows Sebi is back there, but he also knows he can't get him if he's behind the site. The next shot could be fatal, though, if Geo doesn't isn't careful to miss. But the pistol shots, Sebi will find that pick, and Team Mew will tie this S&D at two. Incredible. Geo, though, can't get it done after the plant. 
I thought for a moment he was going to have a chance, and that sniper, I swear, it maybe skimmed off the top of that helmet either way. Good stuff from Sebi, just holding him in position until his teammate could come in from that top side radio and just complete that flank, find the kill, and secure the round. But now to 2v2, so what we were thinking could be a potentially quick map too is now all tied up. And for the side of Revive, it just kind of feels like they are just kind of running at them and throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. But now here come the teammates from the side of Mew. And, oh, Dak gets hit up by one, tries to lay down some suppressing fire with the sniper, immediately gets backed up. And now the pressure over towards that A site. But Geo, he puts himself in a phenomenal position to watch that cross. And he actually gets gunned down by Zeno in the middle. But still, look at number four now. He might be able to find this opening. Gus gives him the coverage and he tries to pull out the snipe. Again, another nade is coming out. Dak, he is somehow surviving these. What is what is Dak up to? Is it the shenanigans. He's in through mid, pushing that close angle with the sniper. And almost gets away with it, with, with a pick, but just gets away. Gus gets gunned down by Pandemic. Dak can't find that sniper shot. I believe he fires the sniper three times. That pistol is going to be what guns down one. It's Zeno. Late trade, you could call it. But with the MP40, he can't pick up Skater as well. Now a 1v3 for Raider to not give up the lead. And up on top of that truck... Team Mew will beam down that last player and take a 3-2 to two lead. This is the first time Team Mew has been up in any sort of respect in this series. And man, do they just want to walk away with it. I'm going to pull out some words that uh, my good old Cole Caster, the gaming chef, likes to say is put away the sniper. Dak was missing shots left and right. So I say, if it's not working... Don't keep it out, but guess what? He's still going to do it for another round. And hopefully he can maybe find something with that car 98. And oh, there he goes with a flick. And unfortunately, it does not connect once again. And still, it feels like the pressure is kind of being felt from the side of Revive. Team Mew, they're really taking away a lot of the map. So Revive is giving them a bunch of this space. And it allows Zeno to rip the head off a of Dak in the middle. Again, that sniper becomes ineffective. He comes in, finds Geo, and he might be able to find another one. He slides under, finds the kill onto Gus. Give this man the ace, but his teammate cleans it up. Team Mew, they are... Rocking and rolling right now with four rounds in a row. I think it's now safe to say put the sniper away to Dak because, I mean, every time you pull it out, it's a gamble, of course, and he, it hasn't been paying off for him. So he, he needs to put that thing away, get take out the AR and see what he can get done holding an angle. But Zeno, three kills right in a row. Revived gaming, could do nothing about it, and they're all stuck at two kills. Of course, it doesn't count the first round, but Zeno... Has seven. He's seven and three right now, which is incredible. And Pandemic's right there with him, six and two. Team Mew, obviously liking the slower pace of this search and destroy. And revived gaming, not so much. Three of them stacked at P5 right now. Zeno is going to make his way down to the fountain. And he might have some good positioning. But this A site is overlooked by Gus no longer, though, as Skater is able to win that gunfight from top fire. So still well done by Team U. Geo is now the last one standing. A skater will pick up yet another one. Dak skater does get traded out, so it's a two or a three v one, and Team U is playing together towards the B side. And Geo is going to have to pull off a massive clutch so he doesn't put the other team on to game point. And guess what? The angles are being held, and it's nothing but perfection for the side. At Team U is they are one round away from pulling this one off. It's a five two lead. It's been honestly flawless. They've been finding the first bloods. They're not getting aggressive. They're allowing the side of Revive to kind of fall into their traps and overpeak. And this kind of happens to be one of those situations where maybe playing an older Call of Duty, you don't know how far your character can kind of peek out at times. Because I remember, if I remember correctly, was it this one that had the peekers advantage or was it the game before in Cold War that did? One of them did, but still, either way, it's not going the side of Revive Gaming. They need to slow themselves down and make sure they're holding the proper angles. But again, Zeno, he is running amok among the side of Revived.
Yeah, that is absolutely for certain. Nine and three right now, and he's able to run a route all the way in behind this revived gaming, but no matter is Sebi is gonna find a nice laser beam with that AR skater with another one. Geo though will combine for a few on his own. Saving his KD right now, but he does get swung as the last player is standing. Not winning that gunfight means you lose that round and will lose the map for Revive Gaming. Team Mew will tie this series up at one with six S&D rounds in a row. How incredible for those guys to come back like that. I mean, I don't know if you call it a comeback just being down two rounds, but the way they handled it, it was so easy. It didn't even feel like the side of Revive put up a fight in that search. And so maybe that is their kryptonite moving forward in this tournament is their search and destroy isn't as good as they thought because they were kind of over challenged. They were leaving Geo in these 1v3 situations. And I think maybe with that, it kind of shows that their coordination is a tad bit off. Is Geo maybe playing a little bit too far behind, not being able to play for those picks, able to be able to play for those trades. But again, I think Dak ended up getting first blooded four out of the six rounds that the side of Team Mew won. And he had the sniper the entire time. So clearly that is something you're going to have to change up moving forward in this tournament if you do end up moving forward in the winners and losers rounds. 1-1, we sit tied in this series. Team Mew revived gaming going into a control next. Stay tuned with us to see that of also... The winner of this game, their next matchup has already decided. The Sycamore Syndicate advance thanks to a forfeit victory and their winner round two matchup. So winners round three, one opponent is already decided. We'll most likely catch that one uh, before uh, we go tonight, of course. So we're going to go to a little bit of a break here uh, as we get this next lobby set up. And we're going to make absolutely certain that uh, the lobby is ready to go before we come back. So stay tuned. We'll be back after this.
Everybody, welcome back to the AWL throwback tournament here in Call of Duty Vanguard as we have the side of Team U going up against Revive Gaming and we have it all tied up at one apiece as it was the side of Revive winning a dominating Bocage hardpoint 250 to 111 and then on the return it was the side of Team Mew taking a Tuscan Search and Destroy in a 6-2 fashion. Reader, this is kind of showing a team that's really good at respawns and not so good at um, search and destroy. Yeah, that was pretty clear last map. They did win the first two rounds right in a row, but Team U got in their horses and they got the job done six times in a row to, to I mean, achieve a decisive search and destroy win. So even though this is a respawn, it is round based and it's a little bit more technical than a hard point is. So I think we're gonna have an even matchup in map three to decide who takes the lead in this series. Of course, it's a best of five, not a best of three, so there'll still be more maps for guaranteed to map forward to this point. So we will see another hard point, which I can only put my money on Revived Gaming after that first bocage. Right away, though, Revived Gaming is on the attack. Team U trying to defend, and a little moment there where Team U was able to shut down Revived Gaming is switched around here by Dak, who finds one, and forced to spawn out. Revived Gaming is gonna give another shot. It looks like they're favoring the B side. I know you were saying that this is going to be a close map three. I don't think that's going to be the case at all. I think Revive is going to steamroll the side of Team U. And uh, the, the B site, if I remember correctly in the CDL, the B site got captured 97% of the time. So you would really have to mess up if you don't get it on the attack because you spawn the other team on defense so far away that they have to sprint all the way across to even have a chance at contesting. But Geo, he's one of the only players alive as Team Mew. They're starting to get a little bit more map control, and he does have to take down the player on the outside, and now he's going to run into potentially one more. He's looking for a little bit of help, but his teammates with the coverage and one more kill, they should be able to secure this B site. Yeah, there it is right there. Dak and Raider combined for a few, and they just need one tick left, and they've achieved this first round. Geo's got the cross. There's one down. Zeno, he gets traded, but it's just not in time as Team Mew will lose round one. Revived Gaming goes up one to nothing, and hey, you may be right if that round is a, a look into how the rest of this map is going to go, then I think we're going to see a Revived Gaming victory, but I think it's a little bit too early to tell. Dak is up there right now he is seven and one in the kd department i mean those are things pandemic is yet to be on the board team U starting late again in this map this is exactly how the map one went dak went on an absolute spree in his first and second life of that bocage and i think pandemic he started off zero and five on that bocage so well he's also just not having a good time in the response clearly and dak he's gonna be the lone ranger he takes down Zeno on that B site, but look at Sebi. He comes on in, wow. finds one onto that A. Won't be able to really find much more as the coverage is there from the side of Revived. There's one player left from Team Mew, and there should be a pinch completed. Dak will get one, but again, the trades are through Revived. This is what we want to see out of them in the respawns. They're getting such good map control, and they'll get tagged up, but they're not going down, and that's the biggest thing when it comes to a map like Berlin. Yeah, Pandemic does get on the board here now, 1-5. and five. And we did see Team U try to hit that A side first. Teams like to do that because if they can get that down, then they pretty much have the round on lock considering how easy it is to capture B. Revived Gaming was able to accomplish it, but they were also able to stuff Team U off that A side in this round. Zeno is able to grab that pick to get on this B site, try to get it captured up fully. And defensively, Revived Gaming has an option to chalk this hill and set up for the next one to make sure Team U doesn't get any further than this one, but it looks like they want to fight. Gus goes down, trying to get into the window. Sebi's got a flank on him. He can't win it. That's a few. Geo gets two. Raider finds one, and that's the clear of the B site. Great defense from Revive so far. And, I mean, Skater's just going to get shut down here. So is Zeno. The A site is closed for business if Team U did not figure that out the first time. But they're spawning that side, and it seems like they have no other option. 
They have no other option indeed. There's only one player currently, and it's going to be Gus. He finds one before he goes down, but again, he just had so many teammates around him. Skater, you're going to be left in a very difficult situation. Number three, Raider, is also holding on to, to the staircase, but he actually gets caught out by Pandemic. And so now here comes the predated. Oh, Dak, he held that one for so long. I think he ended up getting a tag. Zeno does end up getting the team kill. Last member left alive. Nobody else is going to be able to touch this in time. And a dominant defense around coming on in from the revived gaming squad. is. It's clear that the respawn is second to none. That's for certain in these first two rounds. Uh, a great defense. Maybe I... I was maybe expecting Team U to get a little bit more done, maybe not quite win the round after uh, the performance from Revive Gaming in round one, but they they I, they didn't really capture either site. Uh, they didn't really have a good look on either site either. Revive Gaming did a good job sweeping in and getting the kills required to, to force Team U to spawn further than they were hoping for. So well done by revived gaming so far and they're looking to continue that streak they are going to go for this quick a capture again as three players are in the area pandemic is defending on the site lots of players plot as skater pandemic are combined for a few stovel geo on semi and skater he does get traded but that is a good run for revived gaming as uh they did get a few kills in their pocket unfortunately though trying to attack this b site hasn't been fruitful and will suffer a live disadvantage right now 20 or 26 25 as a Geo and Dak will grab Pandemic and Skater off of the map and start capturing B first. So shut down on the A site this time as Team U gets a little bit of defense going. Unfortunately, the one player in Sebi not able to find anybody else in Raider knows all the angles. And I think that's the difference between their side of Mew and Revived is... Revive know exactly which angles to hold. Like, they didn't forget where all the power positions are, and it kind of feels like Team Mew doesn't have that knowledge or maybe forgot where some good spots to hide or, you know, take some challenges because they are getting caught out in some very unfortunate gunfights. They get, get caught running in those sprinting moments. But again, Revive, they're putting the lives still in their own hands. They're sitting down by two. And Geo, he cuts off the reinforcements. That should be the B site. As we all know, A is the money spot. And if they end up getting this one, they are able to close the Berlin out in a 3-0, which also just happens to be my favorite map. So I'm glad we got to cast this one in the throwback. Oh, for sure. I mean, you have to get Berlin on control. It's a staple. Even though that B site is a little bit broken, it's still so much fun to watch. There's so many strategies that you can employ on both offense and defense to try to get this job done. Raider on the pitch loses to Sebi as this A site right now is being heavily defended. This is the harder site to capture, especially when it's the last one left. And usually the attackers aren't able to get it done. Skater's in good position to spawn revive gaming all the way out. Unfortunately, Pandemic, who's supposed, supposed to receive these players, goes down here to Gus. There's a lot of space created here for revived gaming. There's still three players on the map for Team U that they have to get rid of. 45 seconds on the clock. Time is starting to wind down, and so is their lives. They only have a third of what they started with. Make that one lower. Two lower. Skater on Jiu and Raider. Gus will find Pandemic. Good help on the Xeno as well. Dak will get credited with that kill, and here's the hit. Through up the stairs. Sebi's there to receive. Skater will find one of his own as well. Zeno with the cleanup. And Team U stay alive in this round. 20 seconds left and no ticks have been received. No respawns remaining now for Revived Gaming. This is their last possible hit with 13 seconds on the clock. Great challenge by Pandemic who shows up when it's important. Raider does stop the clock here for a second and finds a pick. With just six health remaining, he's sitting on the hill without very much opposition against him. He's got to deal with one on the back. He's able to do nicely. Screaming across the plat right Ooh. now is Mewtwo, and they will finally clear them off. Team Mew finding their first round of this map and staying alive in this control. Dax made, Dak made that one a little spicy right at the end. I thought he could maybe have turned onto that final player. Either way, good job 
from the side of Team Mew adjusting their strategy. And I think everybody kind of learned is that you have to have that railway area cut off, which is where Pandemic was for a lot of time, because it's going to force them to spawn all the way back warehouse and buy those docks. So they had a long way to travel just to even get in position to try to hop on into that A site. Now you have a few players here from the side of Revive. They shut it down once. Can they do it again? And it looks like that will be the case as there's one more player and it is Sebi. He's assigned to back on down, maybe wait for one player to come on through or potentially thinking about this transition. But Gus, he puts himself all the way on those back boxes and he is getting tagged up. Skater's gonna try to go out for this challenge and can he get the kill? Yes, he will. And so B, Currently open, but there are two players currently there from the side of Revive. So you have a chance here if you're Team Mew with numbers for a second, but they have to make it count. Team Mew was almost able to break out on the A site early in this round, but a, a really good counterattack by Revive Gaming kept them off. This B capture, though, may be impenetrable. There's a lot of overlooked tank side, and two players on the point right now. Dak is just waiting to see if he can't get good timing. There's the nade in. He does get taken out right away. Gus finds one in the hecticness, nest, but Xeno and Pandemic will clean up, revive gaming, and that should be the site for Team U. Pandemic is pushed all the way up. Ooh, he does have a pinch. Can he find it, though? Look how fast that player's moving. He can't oh. find it. Back will win. He realizes there's a play on his tail and is able to reposition to get that, win that gunfight. Really well done. Pandemic is no longer pushed up. And Team U is going to be forced to hit A from the front. Raider gets tagged up, but he's not sure from where. He's sent these guys playing ring around the rosy. He doesn't know where he is. Raider does find one before going down, so a little bit of value there anyways. Gus and Geo combining for a few. I mean, Team U are just trapped back in this rail area. They can't break out. They can't at all. This is the perfect setup they wanted. I think once number three gets into position, that is Raider coming in off the spawn. If he watches the middle, he should be able to cover his teammates back but unfortunately a little bit too slow on the draw there and now there's two players down and this might be your chance to move in on the site but geo he tags up one forces him to have to back down but also he had a little bit of help from number two gus who was pushed all the way up eventually goes down but still you're just winning those trade battles or at least you're getting it to an even standpoint and that's just immediately going to slow that halt because just how far you spawn away in this control map it makes it so difficult to even buy for map control so you really have to be methodical in your pushes and play for those kills first before you try to hop on into that point Ooh, skater gets a good tag there but it's not nearly enough eight lives remaining in 15 seconds on the clock a good few down for revive gaming savvy will fall there's one player in the area that could stop the clock and it's Zeno. there's the first for him and now he's known by the rest of the revive gaming team he faces two and can't win it no response remaining but it doesn't matter the clock has counted down and revived gaming will take a two to one series lead with a three to one control victory on berlin it was really really well done i'm also happy to see that team you didn't get shut out and had one positive round other than that it was just all revived revived they just it was simply a matter of slay power and their defense was a tad bit better they just knew how to play the map and not to mention they they put them into a lot more spawn traps than the side of Mew. Mew would get a few kills here and there, but it just felt like Revived knew how to break out of those traps and they would always send somebody on a deep route and kind of just force one or two of those eyes to be like, hey, I think somebody snuck through. We have to keep watching the back. We can't keep watching the front. And that just allowed his teammates to get up and at least take some team challenges in the middle. But it was just such a good setup. You could kind of see it. You had one player who's sitting in the back trains, kind of one player in the back alley. Then he had a player who's sitting in on the point. And then if you had a player who was sitting in the middle of the map on that P5, it made Makes it that much easier because you literally have full coverage of it besides that left and if they are pulling that deep route it's going to take a good 30 seconds or 20 30 seconds before anybody's able to do anything on the attack we know the next game mode is hard point we're not exactly hmm. certain what map it is on we're going to go to a little bit of a break here as these guys of course get set up and ready to go might have to ping into a pub of course that's an issue in uh, vanguard custom lobby so stay tuned with us we'll be back with map four hard point oh uh, never mind i just heard just this just this in 
We have uh, we have a lobby that's ready to go, so we are actually gonna go in soon. But we want to go back and talk more about that Berlin. Uh, I, I did not know that stat about the B site. Ninety seven percent of the time that B site gets captured in in the CDL. Yeah, it, it was a ridiculous stat, and I think it was Nameless who brought it out in particular. And I think at one point it was at 99, but there was a few defenses that kind of came through that, of course, knocked it down to that 97. Uh, but it was just su it's such an easy site to capture, and it's kind of, I'm trying to think of the map in, or in a point in MW2 that's very similar. Not necessarily too sure if there's one that got capped that frequently, but either way, it was just basically a free minute added to the clock. It was just all about holding down that A site, and that's exactly what the side of Revive did. But now loading on into a hard point, you see the slay power that Revive bring. And if you are the side of Team Mew, you're probably not feeling that great coming into a hard point. You're like, if we somehow get this to a map five, you're going to be feeling so dang confident in the search and destroy the way that you manhandled them in the Tuscan. And I know if we get a good little Tuscan hard point in there as well, it, it could get a little spicy with how contest heavy that one is as well. Well, you know what I've been waiting for? And this might be an unpopular opinion, but I'm a really big fan of Gavuto. We Ooh. haven't seen any of it yet this tournament. It's a map that a lot of you may have forgotten about, but it is super AR heavy, super open. And uh, I actually am excited to see it. If we do get to see it tonight, we'll probably, if not tonight, tomorrow. But right now, it is going to be the Tuscan Hardpoint. You were looking for a graph. And I mean, I couldn't be more excited. We already saw one of these tonight, but it's just a staple. It's like raid. It's like hotel. It's just, uh, it's that all in one map that can do it all. It truly is. And I think there's a reason why people forgot about uh, Gavutu Reader. And you should probably forget about it too, because nobody liked that map. Everybody hated it. I like that map. <laughs> oh, come on. That's a bunch of baloney out there. We, we both know it, but we're loading on in to the Tuscan Hour Point. This could decide the winner's round two. And advance yourself to the winner's quarterfinals against that Singapore Syndicate who honestly have had the breeziest of winner's rounds. They ended up getting a forfeit, forfeit from Rally Royals and then they ended up getting a forfeit from the F Killers. But guess what? Their first team is going to be going up against Team Mew or Revive Gaming. And if it's revived, ooh, I might be shaking my boots a little bit. Yeah, I mean, seeing them on stream, of course, they uh, they look good. And they look good in the respawns as they've proven in map one and three. And they are looking to prove again. Team U gets the good spawns, though, here on Tuscan, And we'll grab time early on. But not the good spawns for P2, which they'll be looking to achieve. Sebi is already halfway there, though, with a two-piece. Still revived to gaming is spawning close enough to get rid of him. As that will go in the hands of Gus. Now to clear off this hard point, Gus gets it done. Trying to streak in to grab this time. He's able to step on it after 22 seconds have already been achieved by Team Mew. And they're going to shift their focus all over to P2, trying to break through that church area while Gus flexes his time. P1 will go to Team Mew, at least as uh, the fight is already on. And Geo is bringing it to Team oh. Mew. Wow. That is a two pistol kills in a row. It's a pistol multi kill, if you want to call it that. Ooh, the red tat tat. It is ringing loud and true. And I love this P2 column hill because, again, it's just pure chaos at time with all the nades that would get thrown at you. And I, there's a lot of instances where maps would end on a, I think it was a, a third set of P2 rotations because this one could really come down to the wire. This is also a map that could come down to the clock. We'll just have to wait and see. But either way, it feels like Revive, they're more of playing for those rotations and currently team mew they're keeping up in the slay department if you look across the stat line it's fives across and then one four so that's exactly what you want to see the teamwork is clearly flowing for the side of team mew geo is a one-man army right now on the other side of things seven and four deck is seven and seven playing really fast at the moment and man it feels like it just started but p2 is almost done and teams are rotating over to P3. Now, it starts inactive, but Team U is clearly the closer team. Nobody is really set up in the back yet, which is uncommon. Not what we saw in the first series tonight that we casted. Raider will get traded out. He is able to find one for his life. That's Skater. And Pandemic has gotten into the back. He 
really hard to take this AR player off, but Geo, it manages to get it done. Still time being collected by Team U on P3 as Zeno breaks out on top for his team, 8-6. The one thing you have to be careful is off the spawn, they immediately put Pandemic back there, but he gets gunned, and now with only 22 seconds left, I mean, you might get the rest of the scrap, and you can actually force them in this spawn trap, and I, I don't know why the side of Team U is fighting so hard for this last 20. They should have just chalked it up and rotate, but I guess either way, they spawn in P5, and so they should be able to go all the way back. But look who is sitting, ready, and waiting. It's going to be number six. It's going to be Gus. I don't think they're going to be ready for this wow. one, and they are not. He takes down two for his troubles, and that will be the church for now as Geo takes down one. Almost makes it a second, but Sebi should not be alive for long. And Revive, they immediately break on into the church. And, I mean, they're saying their hopes and prayers. They want to go on to the quarterfinals. Yeah, this map is a little bit closer, or a lot closer than the Bakaj was map one. Revive Gaming still hanging on to a lead here. 20 point differential, so anybody's hard point at this point right now. Gus does go on a times five, close to streaks, but he gets naded off. That's the only team you kill, I believe, since this hard point got active. So great P3 defense right now for Revive Gaming, or P4 it is now. So 100 point mark has been hit, and Revive Gaming is getting the job done in the gunfight department. Dang. He hops in through P5, trying to fight for that as scrap time is almost over for the fourth hard point. And Skater is going to grab initial. Here's the nade. It's charged, launched, and does find Geo. I mean, that was perfectly cooked, but the nades are against them. They're going the other way. Revived Gaming is going to toss everything they have into this hard point to try to get Team Mew off it. Pandemic goes down. It was already weak. Gus is able to contest the time. And Revived Gaming, with all those nades, will will push in to maps to continue collecting time on top of what they collected before and now have achieved their 50 point lead, that cushion that they had in the Bukai. Honestly, I'm having a little bit of PTSD. I'm flinching left and right because I forgot how how many nades you would throw on into this command center hill because it is ridiculous. And teams will fight for every single second, but look at the rotation. It's going to be number three, Pandemic. And the rest of the team, they are fully set up, and they actually got a good 25 on that opening break, and they are ready to go to try to repel the attack of Revived Gaming. And number four, he's going to be that first line skater. He finds one. Can he find another? But there comes the glide bomb. It doesn't actually connect. It maybe takes down a trophy, or maybe he just kind of misplaced it or on the other side of the wall. Said he was able to dodge it. But still, Revive putting up a fight. Dak able to come in on the outside. Pandemic, he cleans up two. Skater with the third. And honestly, this is looking good for the side of Team U. If they get a good chunk of time on this one, they'll find themselves right back into the game. Yeah, Pandemic's doing a good job collecting time right now. Wall bang on the Raider there. Zeno gets some help on the Geno. And now the 100 point mark has been achieved by Team U and they're slowly clawing their way back from the deficit. Revived Gaming was able to get over them in the last couple hard points of that first rotation. Now a lot of activity across the map as P2 is about to become active. Dak trying to hold it down. Sebi is able to sneak by, grabbing one for free before Geo trades him out. Dak will challenge both these players coming out of P5, can only find one. Zeno will trade him out attributed with that kill and this hard point is active revived gaming is grabbing initial but look at the storm of team U trying to get through the back who immediately gets shut down by Raider Dak and Gus again revived gaming well done to get P2 and hold on to it for now nobody has been able to sniff the hill as of yet or even get close and it's actually going to be up to number two semi he's been playing this one and oh he gets the best call of duty timing of his life he should be able to catch out one of these players but he shoots a little bit too early so now his position is given away but he forces the players to scamper and they double back they get the kills and the trades are through pandemic can he stay alive for one second longer no he cannot geo is going out with the ego will anybody be able to hop on this last 15. It doesn't seem like that is the case, but they're trying to cut off any single one of these reinforcements middle of the map for the kills. They're starting to go towards Revive, and it look like number five. He's going to be the player sitting in top fire. That is Dak. He pick up the automaton. Pandemic going back to Old Faithful. He's going to sit behind some of these flower pots, but again, a lot of time is going to the clock at the moment. P3 
active first on it. Revived gaming again. Still lots of players for Team U in the back. Now fire is a big issue. Dax able to find one. He finds mm. two. That's big two for Dax. But he's got a lot more danger in the area. His teammates come to help him out. Geo will find one in the pandemic. Vines gets taken care of by Sebi though. Finds more positioning. will grab Ali. Can he get the player off the point? He's going to need some help. Can't find it though as Raider has his teammates overlook. And this hard point will stay red. I remind you. If Team U loses this, they get relegated down to the loser's bracket. So everything is on the line for them. And this hard point is not looking good. They're only able to break it for just a moment. And with scrap time on the clock, Geo is going to hold it down and achieve nearly 230 points. There is not about a, less than half a hard point Revive Gaming needs right now to advance onto winner's round three, which will be their last series tonight. If they're able to accomplish that. Red Harpoint going into B4. It gets cleared off and Team U will collect some time just for a second though. As Raider will find a big pick on the Xeno. Gets a little bit uh, ignored for a little bit. Finally Raider hops onto it with just 10 seconds left. Can Team U break? I don't know if they can because the kill feed in is all red. Five seconds away and revive. They are showing why they are the kings of Tuscan as they are not going down. They end up taking this map four in a 250-131 victory. They will close out the series in a 3-1 and they are going to punch their ticket to go on and face against the side of the Singapore Syndicate. Yeah, after seeing that first map of the series of Bakaj go the way it did, I was expecting Revived Gaming to take this 3-0, but it's going to be uh, very interesting for the rest of the teams in this tournament, the rest of the teams in the winner's bracket to know that Revived Gaming Search and Destroy isn't as strong as their respawns, or at least it didn't look that way in the Search and Destroy we played in this series. So, uh, of course, there is uh, benefits to being on mainstream, but there's also... Uh, you also reveal some things that you may not want your opponents to know. So we're going to see if that affects them going up against the Singapore Syndicate in the next series. And that should be real, real soon as the Singapore Syndicate has been watching and waiting for this series since it started. So Graf, we should be getting right into it uh, relatively shortly. But we are going to go to a little bit of break as these two teams, of course, add each other and get ready to go. Oh, well, before, uh, I guess before we're cutting it to a break, we did happen to see the bracket right now. As you can see, we are now in the winner's round three, or also known as the quarterfinals. And on the other side of, or on the lower side of the winners, you have Mommy Melkers going down to High Seekers in a 2-1, most likely a 3-1. And then Arise takes down the turds in a 3-0 fashion. They're going to go up against the High Seekers so this, these are going to be some interesting matches coming up for that quarterfinals. But again, stay tuned. We have the side of Revive going up against the Singapore Syndicate right after this.
Welcome back, AWL fans, to the Vanguard Major, a throwback tournament for $1,000. We are finally loading in to our third match of the night. I know it's a little bit later than we were expecting, but that's all right. Revived Gaming we're continuing with their run in this tournament. They're going up against the Singapore Syndicate. My name is Reader. Unfortunately, Ref. I had to go pick up a buddy at the airport. So I'll be joined by producer, caster, observer, Aslo, buddy. How are you doing? What's it like to be on stream? Yeah, doing great. Usually I'm behind the scenes, but uh, it's nice to, you know, come and see what's going on in the cast today. Uh, we're here, matchup on Gavin 2. First time we've seen it tonight. It's an exciting matchup. Two good teams. One hailing from EWS, uh, who is uh, in the league, and then also Revive Gaming, who has just been uh, on fire. Especially in the response, and we're starting off with a response, so we'll have to see how that works out for Revive Gaming. This is a separate map than what they're used to so far in this tournament. This map is AR heavy. You need to hold those long angles, and I think at one point in the game cycle, teams were running three ARs. I don't know if that's still a thing. It's very possible it's still a thing, but the automaton is king on Gav, and we're going to see a lot of it. P1 is almost done. Syndicate is able to sneak in there for a good bit of time to take an early advantage. Not too much, but good enough anyways. And in the boat around the tank will be where our second hard point spawns up. Syndicate on it first. They get cleared off. Big shot by Raider there. Geo gets traded out by free KZ. But Raider's going to hold some time here. Free is trying to get him off the point. He's able to do so. He gets traded out himself. So a mixy P2 so far will give Syndicate their lead back after clearing off Revived uh, off the point. And they're doing well at the keeping up Revived Gaming, who I'm not so sure is going to compete as well on this map as they did on Bocage. This map is the opposite of Bocage, to say the very least. Yeah, Reader, I think you are Graf pointed out that one of the disadvantages of being on the is that the other teams get to see how they do it. Maybe they saw how Bokaj Tuscan went, they said, oh, you know, these are small, tiny maps, and Reviver dominating on that, so Syndicate said, now we're going to try something uh, a little bit more long range, try and bring up those ARs, and see if we can mix it up a bit, throw Revive Gaming off their game, and so far, if that's the strategy, uh, they aren't too far behind, Revive Gaming still in the lead with that 40 points, but uh, this is the setup for Syndicate, right? Like, they're right here on this side of the map, they have the zone covered, and they'll soon hop on, Freaks, first one on here, Singapore Syndicate, and we'll have to see how much of this hill they're going to be able to hold on to because that next switch all the way to the other, other side, there is another one too, like, you can go all the way to the other side and bring it back to the game. With Gava 2 Reader, you can come back even if you're down because these are huge long lines of sight that you have to watch over, and um, if you flip the spawns, uh, you'll be able to get a lot of time. Yeah, every hill can be a money hill on Gav if you play it properly. This hill well, for about 20 seconds was completely uncontested. Both teams have their bow on the point. And scrap time is going to go to Syndicate as both teams are fighting in the back for P4 around the tower. Good positioning there by Geo will find him one for free on free. And DJ is not able to get himself in through the back. So revived. I mean, this is the money hill on the map, in my opinion. You can hold this one for the entire 60 if you're able to get a good setup right off the bat and defend the beach properly. DJ isn't going to be able to grab one. He gets straight up by Geo. Geo already under fire from a couple other players sitting P1. Syndicate's going to be able to move their way through, sneak by Geo, and try their shot at hopping up on this hard point. Geo tries to reposition, but he does get kicked off by Keo. Who will himself get traded by Raider. Raider is the lone submachine gun player for Revived Gaming. Possibly the only MP40 player on this map so far. Revived Gaming, good hard point. They're going to start rotating off with just about 20 seconds left. Like I said, you can hold it for a full 60 and Revived Gaming just did. Yeah, absolutely. These are the big rotations that count. They make all the time and uh, that can put you up in a really big lead. And I mean, we were talking about, you know, ARs having to come out. And Geo is an example of one of those strong ARs throughout the amateur scene and uh, a little fact checking between the last few series and uh, Geo was a Vanguard champion I had to go and make sure I remembered that but he did win the inaugural major of AWL the very first one that ever happened under amateur world league branding and it was a Vanguard uh, game that was being played at the time last time 
Right, so he's coming back, oh. Raider. He's saying, I want to win another one. And uh, Raider's going crazy on this boat as the lead continues to grow. As for sure, the second he picks up the auto, though, he gets lasered from behind. Free is going to pick up that kill. He gets traded by Gia. Wow. Uh, all of a sudden, Kofi goes white as the spawn trap is on. Syndicate can't make their way under the bridge. Free will give him his shot, and Gus will finally get taken down. I think he got three or four there before going uh, at the hands of Free, and then he gets immediately traded out. Geo with another two right off spawn. Ah, one on a teammate, on accident for sure. But no matter, as T1's about to come up next, and that cruise missile will find Free. Dak with that streak. Well done to be able to achieve that. Raider is going to clear off P1, and Revive Gaming is now in full motion, undeterred by the difference between this map and the last ones they've played, currently with a over 100 point lead. Yeah, absolutely. They are uh, coming out here and they're frying, and at the beginning it almost looked like Syndicate were going to be putting up a, a significant challenge for Revive Gaming, but since then, uh, has been much, much on the board in terms of points, and it looks like Revive Gaming, it does not matter what respawn map it is, they are staying solid. Led by Geo, led by uh, Raider, everyone's doing great on this team, the only one negative is Gus, and that's totally fine if you got these uh, cracked players around you. Collecting points and uh, continuing to extend this lead. Goku is able to find one on the point, but that's all he's going to be able to get. Gus will be able to deal with him. Kyo with one, and the kill feed's going back and forth right now, but the fight for P2 is on. DJ gets a good pinch, able to deal with Gio with the pistol. Himself, Raider. Will be able to deal with DJ. Joker on to Gus. And these kills are going back and forth on this P2. Nobody's been able to grab any amount of time on it whatsoever. Raider dig. That's the second TK there for Red Revive Gaming. But the positioning is so good on top of the boat. I don't think it's going to matter. They're still going to be able to collect time. Right now the challenge is on though. Joker gets taken out by Raider. Raider with another one right after. And 20 and 9 is Raider right now. He proved he could do it with the sub on this map. And now he's proving he can do it with the AR. As every time he picks one up. It seems like he just adds to his kill streak. And he wasn't even wanting to get a kill streak for Revive Gaming. Everyone's doing well at Revive Gaming right now. Gus is on a multi kill. Syndicate just can't get anything done. I mean, they've been sitting at 42, I think, since T2. Yeah, holy so it's like they're just heating up. They're starting to look like they're cracked. They're off something. They're going crazy. And did you notice, Reader, then, that they just left the open? Eh? Like, they're so confident. They just left it open. They said, oh, we have that right now. And look what it's going to be. It's probably going to be a 250 and into the 100 point club for Syndicate. Revive Gaming though, they just have to close it out right here and this is probably what the once they get on the hill, but they're in no rush. Right? They're no, no. Their way here. They're getting two pieces on the way. They're not very worried about it. They might be ex trying to extend this just to get a few more kills on the board. Maybe Gio wants to hit that nice 30 mark on, uh, on Gabba 2, but we'll have to see if he's able to do so right here. And the game is coming to a close, Reader. This is it. Wow, that pistol kill by Dak, another one by Dak. Dak is just, he doesn't even need his primary weapon. And he will win the game for his team. Revived Gaming will 50 point club syndicate. And that is, uh, again, another respawn demolition of their opponents. Uh, it was even worse than it was on Bokaj. I feel like on Bokaj, their last series, of course, Revived Gaming may have had a chance to uh make their score a little bit better it was a 111 score that their opposing team was able to uh, accomplish but i mean half that 42 was the score for syndicate in that respawn so honestly as i think that this s and d is going to be the make or break for this series if we're going to see a fourth map or not it all comes down to this s and d on desert siege and it's a weird one as well uh, we don't see very much Desert Siege during the Vanguard game cycle, but we're going to see it here. Yeah, absolutely. Desert Siege, uh, one thing that comes to mind when I think of Desert Siege is Octane of uh, LA Thieves just whipping the sniper out, jumping down the one defensive side, I think it is, and just sniping, I think he got like a two-piece collat or something across that open field on the right side. It makes for an interesting s and for sure. I mean... On the right side, you have that big open field, a lot of AR fights, but then in that house in the middle, I don't know if some people call it university or not, but there's a lot of little gun fights. You can bring out the subs. There's room to make plays, basically what I'm saying. You'll probably see a sniper, maybe two, and uh, it should be interesting, but for now, we can uh, head into a short intermission, and we'll be back this next step.
Welcome back. Map two about to be underway. Played on Desert Seed. Revived Gaming against Singapore Syndicate. If you're just joining us, Revived Gaming 50 point club Singapore on map one, which is played on Gavutu. That hard point was without a doubt all revived. This SD though could be a different story. Last seat series. This team did not win their SD, but won every other respawn to win the series. We'll see if Revive can get their SD game sorted and go up to against Singapore Syndicate. On the other hand, we can see Singapore tied this series up at one and try to face these respawn demons in a control and a fourth map hardpoint. My name is Reader. I'm joined by producer, observer, caster, Aslo. Sir, Desert Siege, man, it's been a while. I'm trying to remember how this map goes for Search and Destroy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look for those outer lanes. Uh, snipers, ARs, I haven't seen a sniper yet, but... Uh, oh, no, nope, that was... Uh, I thought that was a sniper for a second, but it was just the auto. Yeah, those outer lanes, I mean, a lot of the gunfights uh, will happen on those two outer lanes, and then also through the middle in Night University, but uh, it's all about, you know, mind games, right? Always with SD, and I think uh, for players that haven't played this in a while, as everybody hasn't, uh, it's maybe about adaptability. Who's going to adapt uh, the best as they can? And Syndicate on the board first. There we go. Uh, we'll see if they'll be able to keep up. And we have to remember, for everyone who's watching, uh, if you watch the last series, Revive Gaming, the only place they looked weak was in the s &D. Yeah, that's for sure. Geo is the only player to find a kill for Revive Gaming. On the other hand, Keo, 2-0. and Free is now 2-0 and after that first blood right off the bat. It's going to be with the AR. Raider trades it back, so we have an even scoreline in the live department. 3-3 three to three at the moment. Raider is going to see if he can't make his way on top of the mid-building. Doesn't look like he's actually going to get all the way up there. But there's some good positioning here out of Syndicate. They do need to pick up that bomb. Raider with a laser on Joker. Will give Revived Gaming the 3-2 to two advantage. Ooh. Dak goes down in the background to DJ, 2v2. There it is at a DJ. And he, ooh, I'm not sure if he could see a piece of that player or not, but obviously he didn't spot. to his oh. reposition. Yeah, no, I remember this angle. I remember this angle from uh, from back in the day where I actually played this game. So does Raider, apparently, because he's able to spot that sniper no problemo. And Keo is now forcing a 1v2 with 22 seconds left on the clock. I believe it is up to Syndicate to plant this bomb. So Keo is going to rotate back to pick it up. It was not picked up at the start of this round. I don't think there's any overlook on it because Revived has not realized that the bomb is down. He's going to take this over to the A side. It is being watched right now. And yeah, he just gets... I mean, his head fell off. Yeah. That is just a laser beam. Revived Gaming will tie this one up at one apiece. I love those little spots, like even here, I remember using this spot a lot and seeing it in the leagues, in the CDL, everything. Uh, th that's what this uh, this map is about, right? There's lots of little angles you can take with the ARs and even spots you can hide with your SMGs. So it's about working together, hunting the other team down and trying to bring the bomb forward if you're on offense. If you're on defense, I mean, hold your angles, watch your lanes, right? And uh, that's what they were able to do successfully. Revive, they're on the board. It is now 1-1. Yeah, is going to go into that same spot on top of the trains. Dak with the sub. He's going to push up with the teammate, trying to stun check that B sight, even though he, his partner has a, a line of sight. Joker is able to find one for free on a Raider. I believe he was heard, which is rare in this game, as you can't really hear very many footsteps. Although, if you do have it turned up, you can hear it stomping around around you. DJ with that sniper again has it pulled out. He did find one with it, I believe, or maybe it was with the pistol in the last round. But Kyo is trading out Gus to keep things tied at two. DJ, the last one standing, and you don't want to be the last one standing with the sniper, but I've seen it done. They know where he is as well. Oh, what a quick scope by DJ. Can he find one more? He's got to do it again. And the last one standing is Dak, one and two, looking to even up his KD, and there's not a lot of time on the clock. So DJ is going to sneak around the bomb, check if his opponent is sound pouring in the background. Season drop, the pistol shots, they're in. It's just not in time for the defusal. Revived Gaming is going to win their second round. DJ, I mean, you got both kills. He accomplished that, but not in time for the defuse.
Yeah, and it, it almost makes you wonder if he went right for the defuse off the rip, and you know, it's one of those situations where they only know in hindsight, but he might have been able to get that uh, defuse off because it wasn't getting checked immediately, so uh, that would have been interesting. But here we go, it was impressive that he was able to get that snipe and uh, even the pistol kill. This pistols in Vanguard are something else, Reader, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's for, I mean, the rat can, it's, it's almost like a, a mini sub in your pocket that's just single fire. Uh, it, it does more damage per bullet than the auto for sure, and maybe even the MP40 if you're real up close. But Joker's made his way all the way to the top, and oh, oh gets late. What? KO trying to kill the same player will kill his teammate and not the player behind him, giving revived gaming an incredible advantage. It's now a 2v1. Kyo's the last player standing. He's 5 and 2, though. Unfortunately, he's on the attack, so he's got to pick up the bomb and get free. it planted. He's able to grab one for free on the Gus. Leaving him in a 1v1. So his position is called out. He could have moved by now. Raider is just chilling. He knows where that bomb is. So he's just going to stand on it, waiting for Keo to challenge. I'm pretty sure he knows that it's right there on him. It's hard to tell if Raider's actually aware of that. But I can't imagine he stays here for too long if he didn't. He knows his opponent needs to come attack this. And I think Keo is starting to become aware that Raider is probably right on top of this bomb. He hears the footsteps on the other side and is able to deal with them. Well done by Raider. The intelligence to be able to hold that bomb from inside, knowing that the game sense, knowing that this player is going to run through. Really well done. Three to one now for Revive Gaming. You know, it's a, it's a pleasure watching a game where search is interesting, where, you know, you can hear yeah. footsteps, but not all of them. And uh, there's different strategies that can happen, right? So... Yeah, we all know you have a gripe with MW, too. Yeah, it's uh, not as interesting to watch and search, I'll tell you that. Uh, but this one is, and you know what? Fond memories of seeing all the snipes on this map. Crazy times. Raider trying to take down this early pick. He's going to lose it to Keo. Keo has just been an unmovable oh, object with that AR, except when he's naded by Geo, who uh, will launch that nade. Geo, ultimate launch. Those nades. Good pitch here by Free. Can he find two? He can, and that's the round. Syndicate will win thanks to Keo. And that is, uh, or sorry, Free with that two piece, I believe it was. Yeah, Keo uh, had that first one to get traded. But yeah, Free with a big two piece. That makes a pause in the KD department. Really well done by him. And right back in this game is the Singapore Syndicate. Still not tied, but it could be, it could be very, very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Revive though. Uh, looking stronger in the SND, I feel like, uh, in comparison to the last season, so our last uh, series. But Syndicate, not out of it yet, and uh, we'll have to see how they do on the offense here. They're going to push around to the left side. Freaks looking over his teammate, who's pushing towards the bomb right now. That's number seven, Joker kind of used able to get it down. Not quite. It's taken out by Geo, but Geo wow. gets trade. What a snipe, eh? Yeah, I mean, DJ wasted no time to point and click at Geo. There is still a player top tower in DAC. I'm not sure if the heirs of Syndicate are aware of his positioning. He's going to move down to the bottom of the building. As Look at this area defense here by Syndicate. Uh, I mean, they're going to get the bomb down here, but they're overlooking every angle they possibly can. That stun check is actually going to hit DJ, so they're coming after him right now. Not able to get the full kill. As I believe he was shot at Raider over challenges and will die to free, giving the advantage over to Syndicate with that bomb planted. That's huge. Dak will see nothing down this lane. And he's going to be forced closer to the bomb. I don't think he's going to like this gunfight. No, he will not. Gus with the last one standing now as free will find a second one on that heady. He just cannot be taken off. Gus also dealt with by free. Free again with the multi kills to win rounds is propelling his team. He's, he's tied it up almost single-handedly. Really, really well done by him. And uh, we, we have a tie game right at three. Yeah, and I, I think Syndicate just did a better job of holding lanes, you know, staying confident, being aware of their positioning and watching each other's backs. And they just did a great job with that revive. They were too scattered. They were too spread out. They were challenging one by one and dying one by one. And that's, uh, that's what went on in that round. But we are, we're tied Seems up 3-3. Like Seems like Syndicate's got the formula for this A site. I wouldn't be surprised to see Revive to go B with this bomb. Raider gets pinched. Look at this. All of Syndicate almost is racing down the B side of the map. Joker will grab one that Dak was just not expecting. And he's able to get away. And I think he could have another pinch. Gus is not aware whatsoever. This player is right, but is aware of the player in front of him. Can't find the second one. 
And Singapore will take their very first... No, that's not true. They had the first round. They'll take back their one round lead. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that was close there. Good, good kill by Joker, eh? I mean, that could have gone seriously wrong seriously fast in a 1v1 scenario if Joker wasn't able to turn around quick enough. Um, good positioning, though, out of Gus, I would say, to at least give that round a shot and bring it back. But... Three to four. This is probably the closest I feel like we've seen revived uh, all tournament long so far on stream. And yeah, this is true. Even the game they lost wasn't really all that close. So things get interesting as we're watching revived as we may not have expected. Raider is all the way around the back. He's executing the same flank that Syndicate did in the last round, and he could have a great look at one to two players here. There's the first one, it's for free. No whiffs there. The second one he gets help with, and that leaves Joker, the last player standing. He's gonna grab that first one in the 1v4. He needs the ace to do it uh -huh. and can't beat the second one. That's a really good challenge by Raider, and the defuse is well in time by Gus. Revived Gaming will stop Syndicate's win streak and tie this game at four. Yeah, and I, I did like the effort of Joker there. I mean, you have to move fast, you have to move quick, you have an SMG, take advantage of that, right? Make the quick moves and see if you can get lucky, see if you can get one to three uh, off the bomb there. And we've seen that before. We've seen that all day, to be honest, Reader, where people are getting three pieces just out of nowhere because they get just great COD timing. Um, lots of room to maneuver on these maps, definitely. Yeah, this is what Vanguard is all about. There is uh, so much opportunity sometimes, and sometimes you can't see two feet in front of you. And uh, it's the good players who can sort out the good positioning from the bad. The B site's being looked at by Revived Gaming. They know Syndicate's got a good lock on A in the last couple rounds. They've attempted to attack it. And then they do in this round as well. Look at that positioning on the left side of the map. At least our left side of the map right now. Uh, Raider is stuck in mid. I wouldn't say he's stuck, but there is a lot of Syndicate players in this building as well. And he's being challenged from behind. Still able to win and react. Free, on the other hand, is going to get his trade. So a 3v3, we set free peeks out just a little bit more there. He's dead. He's lucky he didn't quite get that far. Revived Gaming needs to pick up the bomb now as it's sitting outside of the building. 2v3, KO will win the AR battle against Dak. Gus is going to retreat from that side. DJ gets hunted down. Geo knew the sniper was probably sitting back here and he does not waste any time pushing far enough back to be able to get that kill and tie this one up at two, but not a lot of time on the clock for the attackers sending or er, revived to get this bomb planted. Gus is behind the enemy lines and could have a pinch. He gets the bomb planted, wins the gunfight against Free, who became aware. F or sorry, not Free. Free is looking for the trade. The overlook is on. Revived gaming that was really well executed and around that I don't think that they were expected to win because of the time on the clock Gets things done on the A site Yeah, they did a great job in terms of isolating players and maneuvering around to different sites Singapore They just kind of stood on one spot. They weren't reading what was going on and uh, they were able to sneak through do some maneuvers And I loved how he watched over his teammate there uh, at Revived gaming while the bomb was getting planted Perfectly executed, uh, well done on their part, and let's see if they're able to uh, win this map. Revived Gaming, one away to taking this map. Syndicate, one away from forcing round 11. Geo on the outside angle, able to grab just the head of DJ, trying to snipe, I think, in that moment, but he's got another one to fight. Geo is trying to get a good angle, he will. Freeze is trying to retreat back there, I don't think that's a call, I don't think he was quite certain where his opponent exactly was. Joker on top of the trains will find one. He's getting shot in the back, though. He's able to get away with his life, leaving... I mean, he is the last one standing, so he's got a 1v4 here to try to tie this series, or at least stay in this map. He's able to retreat all the way up to the top of the building. I don't think he's going to get more than that. Gus sorts him out for Revived Gaming, who will win their first search and destroy, as far as we're concerned, in this tournament. Six to four, so not flawless like the respawns, but they have now proven they are capable on search and will threaten a series sweep. Yeah, you know what, uh, Reader, they, uh, they approved on the search, they did a good job on that, but I also have to give kudos to Singapore. They were able to adapt on some of those rounds, figure out how to play as a team, especially on that one defense where they just flanked all the way around. That was uh, super impressive and trying to have different maneuvers. 
uh, that map was was just really interesting to watch. Like there was options to do different things. I felt like a lot of rounds were different from other rounds, and uh, although there were some very interesting cruddy spots that would make me yell into my mic if I got killed from this. Uh, but uh, like you said, up 2-0, and the next map will be a control. Um, we'll have that up in one second. But what were your takes from uh, from that map? You know, I thought that Singapore had a great, uh, a great map. They played, they bounced back from the the Gavutu really well. They, it, having a map that bad, it's hard to come back from that. Even though uh, Search and Destroy is such a huge pace change, it's like a completely different game. And I say that in MW2, but in Vanguard, it just means so much more because the the pace difference between Hardpoint and, and Search and Destroy in this game particularly is just massive and immense. And it's why we see a lot of either really good SD teams or really good respawn teams, which I think Revive Gaming is just a really good respawn team. Unfortunately, it's an opportunity that's now has passed by. Revived Gaming did great at uh, stopping Singapore Syndicate. Anytime Singapore found success in something, Revived shut it down. For example, the A site, Syndicate shut it down two or three times. Revived was able to get a plant down and win on that site later in the map. That flank along the left outside, a couple rounds later, we see Gus go and challenge the sniper on the left side of the map, winning uh, the positioning over there. So, I mean, Revived Gaming is, is really resilient. They're adapting really well to their opponents, and not only uh, are they doing that in the respawns, they proved that they can do it in Search and Destroy. So, I, I mean, we're going into a Tuscan control, and I think that they're set to win it. Uh, they did really well against their opponents last series in control. So this one could be a lock here from Rive Gaming. It's going to take a lot for Singapore to, to be able to force a map for. All right. Well, when we return, well put, Reader. We'll find out uh, how this will go. Will Syndicate be able to turn the series around? Or will we be headed uh, into tomorrow? And, and be sure to return tomorrow because that's when we're going to see the championship final. See who's actually crowned the champion. See if Geo is able to come back. Um, but actually, before we head to intermission, it kind of looks like we might be starting right now. Um, just going to make sure. But it looks like it. I believe the the control map that uh, Revive Gaming played was a Berlin. So Tuscan is a little bit different. Of course, you're going to want to capture that P1 site first and then go for B, uh, which is usually the last one standing. Sometimes you see teams go for that B site right off the bat, but honestly, it just requires you funneling through P5 and flat, and you can just get routed, and then you just start the round off with a live disadvantage as the attackers, which you don't want. So you should see them attack A site first, or whichever team is attacking first, attack that A site first and get that captured, and then maybe try to push into the back past the church. So hopefully we'll see that go down here as well. But that's my take on Tuscan Control which is just about to get underway again. Revive Gaming up 2 to nothing in the series against the Singapore Syndicate. Singapore Syndicate trying to stay out of the loser's bracket in this map. They need three maps in a row in this series to be able to stay in winners. It's a tough task, especially against such a great respawn team as Revive Gaming has proven themselves to be. Here we go, underway. Geo will open us up with a laser beam on DJ. And uh, the Chow's pushing forward. Joker kind. We'll see if we'll be able to move up the map right here. And uh, for now, Revive Gaming. They do have control of the A site. There was a lot of pressure off Syndicate in a 3v1 off the rip, but uh, they will now push towards B. And this is what we'll see, Reader. This is the back and forth, back and forth that will happen uh, in Vanguard and in this specific control map where they go from one side to the other and they'll have to choose at some point which one they want to commit to and get something on the board. Because you know what? They are out of time uh, once a minute is gone. They have a minute to capture one of the zones, get some more added time, and move towards getting the last one. That is how control works in Vanguard and has always worked in all the classrooms. Uh, but A, A is looking to be the one that they're looking towards now, but they are getting fights and they're going to have to watch out for that, Reader. Yeah, Raider had a couple right there as well. Dak will follow up. Lots of MP40s out again for Revived Gaming. Their last respawn on Gavutsu required the AR power. They were able to harness it. And now they're back on the MP40s, which they've been so good on last series. Kyo is going to get some help on Dak. It, it may not be enough to capture A. Look at this laser. Free is just pushed up way too far. Geo's got another one to do with those progress is being made at A. And the flank is good on Geo. Joker will find two. 
Gus is able to try to, or is able to push up a little bit, but can't find the pick in the back, leaving the A-side captured for the Singapore Syndicate. Back up on the tank, Gus goes. He's been lethal in his position last time we saw him on Tuscan. The Syndicate isn't making a, a valuable push back behind the church just yet. Raider shutting down DJ. Uh, Raider again shutting down Free. And it just seems like it's the Raider show on that side of the map right now. As there hasn't really been a, a solid push through P5, Revived Gaming is pushed up so far up the map that there's so much the thing we're going to get have to clear. Joker will find the back of Raider, ending his streak. Kia will get with Geo. Joker touches the point to try to stop the time. They do have a lot of time on the clock, but what they don't have is lives left to do so. What a challenge by Raider. Joker had no chance in that gunfight. 7 to 14, we sit in the lives. Geo's able to get in and find the kill. I mean, the headshot multiplier worked for Geo on the free. And Dak in the background will grab on to DJ. Syndicate, no respawns remaining. Revived Gaming with all the lives in the world that they may need. Raider does go down right there. It's just saying the Syndicate can't really touch the point here. And with only three lives remaining, I think round one is over. I think uh, Revive did a good job uh, holding on to getting those kills and hunting for them. Playing for the kills a little bit more, uh, knowing that they had the, the skills to bring down those numbers and, and not to worry about it. There were a couple holes that Syndicate did take a They are able to push up through the church, through the field. They are able to get that first point, but it just wasn't enough firepower reader, uh, to get through Revive Gaming. I felt like there was opportunities, like when Joker was behind the point, but... There just wasn't enough firepower. They didn't take advantage of the moments that they could have and uh, provide gaming. They're looking to end this series. They don't want to. They don't want this to go to a game four. Yeah, they're trying to get it done as soon as possible. They're literally not letting Syndicate see the light of day on either point. Now they're tasked with capturing. Syndicate does step on the side for just a second. They are covering this A side. Look at this push by Raider. The flick onto his opponent in you that was joker that fell and they're gonna go for this b side first and i like the route they took i said that funny through p5 is a bad idea you're gonna lose lives and i guess they listened because they went through church and now they're three stacking on this b site they have dak even pushed up not capturing to cover the back that is a sign that revived is getting really confident keo goes down geo and gus combined for a few and that is the b site captured before you can even say B site. Wow, uh, that's seriously impressive map control that they had on there. They really refined that. They played uh, disciplined and honestly, Reader, they're just smoking them. Like, they are just flying at them. There's a confidence that they have uh, revived that they've had against uh, any team all day and every spot. They're just flying, they're the taking full advantage of the movement offered by this game, uh, and they're on their way to uh, capturing A. I mean, look at the live count. It's 17 to 22. And that is a major difference at this point in the control round. They're already capturing on the A site. They do get cleared off. Raiders force away. Trying to flank through you. He gets found by free. And that is a shutdown from the Syndicate. The first time they clear revive off a of site in this control round, which they were unable to do on the B side. Good flank from DJ. Gus was deep in enemy lines, but... He still found one for his life in that moment, and the A side capture is back on. Raider in the church will find a second. Free will be able to grab that. A good piece of timing on him, shutting him out from the, the trap. But Gus with a few here is continuing to capture. Two ticks already made, and the lies are ticking down for Syndicate. Look at that. Raider, I feel like he just died. Already spawned up and flying across Singapore, singing the Syndicate screens so fast that they can't even react. Tower gets taken down as well. I mean, yeah, this is this is uh, this is it. This is a masterclass, definitely. They're 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 in a whole other class by themselves, and I like that. Even when they go down, they're able to have still map control because they leave people up in the other zone, and they're just ready to go as soon as the other teammates spawn up. So that shows you that even if they play a team that was maybe more evenly matched to their gunny. Uh, they'd still have the strats to be able to carry it out, but right now they're just showing complete dominance on this map. We are ready. Do you think it's going to be a 3-0? Uh, after the defense we saw the first time, I am betting on it. Singapore Syndicate didn't get through anywhere the first time, and Revived Gaming's confidence level is as high as it has been. Now, that can be a bad thing, but I think 
for revived, it's not gonna be. Because it seems as if they're handling these gunfights with ease. Gus up close and personal with three on that AR to get the first one. Joker is able to get things done. No third, though. Gus will take him out. At least the tick has been captured on A now out of the Syndicate. It's not going for B early on as Revived Gaming did. But a good first tick will get them well on their way. Unfortunately, Gus is locking down the site. Free gets in behind him and now the capture resumes on this A site. 14 and 18 right now is Free on the other side of things. 21 and 12 is Raider on the sub. Jack finds two and now his KD is plus five at 15 and 10. And a fortunate team name is going to leave Syndicate crippled in their own end. Dak is not letting them escape. Finally, he gets taken out. Dak knew he had streaks in that moment before getting broken off that trap. And, I mean, Keo's going to go for a Hail Mary on the B side, trying to distract some revived gaming players, maybe, of the A side. There is a lot of Syndicate players pushed up deep in this map. But I don't think it's very long lived as the hunt is on. Raider is able to get that first kill. Keo is on his tail. There it is. Oh, it was actually on the Gus. And the A side is two ticks captured. But it seems as if the Syndicate can only really capture a tick at a time. I feel like that move from Keo was not uh, very productive. He didn't have the patience. He just kept running around until he was shot in the back. All that effort, all that time to only come away with one kill and not help your teammates get on A or B. I'm not sure uh, how well used to the life that was, but he was trying to make something out of nothing. And uh, that's what it's starting to look like. 11 revived gaming. You'll be on your way to what? Semi-finals. Semi and uh, we'll see them tomorrow. And I, I would not be surprised if we see them in the grand final. What do you think, Reader? There we go. Well, I can't even think of a team that can compete with them because the Singapore Syndicate is a team I know I've seen before, and they just got wiped by Revived Gaming, a 3-0 sweep that was not even close, except for maybe the Search and Destroy. But both respawns were very, very firmly in the hands of Revived Gaming. So it seems as if Revived Gaming uh, had a little bit more trouble in the last match, and that team's down in the loser's bracket. So we're gonna see if there's tomorrow, if there's a team that can topple them. But as it stands right now, Alzo, they are undefeated. Defeated indeed, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure how, how you're gonna come back from that. Uh, if you're a Singapore Syndicate, hopefully they can come back and maybe be in the grand final and get the revenge. But uh, as for revive, they're looking like tournament favorites to me. Absolutely. Again, a three to nothing sweep. Uh, revive game and moving on to the semifinals. Singapore Syndicate do have another chance down in the losers bracket. That is all for us tonight. We will be back with the semifinals and the grand finals tomorrow at the same time, seven o'clock. Get tuned in tomorrow. My name is Reader. I've been joined by a multitude of casters, including Graf and of course, Aslo. So thank you guys so much for watching tonight. We'll catch you guys tomorrow for the semifinals.